Silver is trading at $14.31 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,073 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $456. Antiwar.com reports, though the Iraqi military secured no gains in Wednesday's fighting in Ramadi, they bragged about a huge death toll among the Islamic State fighters, claiming hundreds of fighters from the Islamic State were killed since Tuesday and the city would be totally retaken in a matter of days. The death toll is noteworthy because they'd only estimated a couple of hundred the Islamic State fighters left in the entire city on Monday, and despite claiming once again to have killed at least that many, there seemed to be more than a few remaining. Iraqi officials first moved into Ramadi earlier this month and have been predicting victory in a matter of days ever since. The hope is to have it done by year's end. The Islamic State has held the city since May and still holds key central portions, including provincial capital buildings. A large number of civilians are still believed to be trapped in the city, though dozens were reported to have escaped into government-held areas as fighting raged into the afternoon on Wednesday. The city initially had around half a million residents but the on-again, off-again fighting there, as with much of Iraq, has left many displaced. In 1999, Daryl W. Perry began a search for traditional values, which led him down a path to the ideas of liberty. He tells the story in A Rebel's Journey, My Path to Liberty. Of the book, Dr. Brian Sovereign says, Sometimes it's funny, and sometimes I think it's crazy, but it's always authentic. Find A Rebel's Journey, My Path to Liberty by Daryl W. Perry on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, ask for A Rebel's Journey wherever books are sold, or visit arebelsjourney.com. UPI reports Virginia will stop honoring most out-of-state concealed carry permits, a move to tighten gun control laws without involving the legislature. State Attorney General Mark R. Herring announced the plan Tuesday. Virginia will no longer honor the permits from 25 states with which it currently has a reciprocity agreement. Herring said, while you are here in Virginia, you are subject to the Commonwealth's gun laws. He added that the 25 states have relatively lax gun laws compared to those in Virginia. The state's new policy, which goes into effect in February, is one which a number of state governors are adopting to address gun violence without expecting Republican-controlled legislatures to change gun laws. Although visitors to Virginia can still obtain non-resident permits to carry concealed handguns if they meet the state standards, Chris Cox of the National Rifle Association's Institute for Legislative Action said, This decision is both dangerous and shameful. At a time when people are scared and desperately need the ability to defend themselves, Herring has chosen the path of making self-defense harder. Agreements with West Virginia, Michigan, Oklahoma, Texas, and Utah will remain in place. For nearly 40 years, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage has been a trusted source for buying and selling precious metals like gold and silver. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and have permanently removed the minimum purchase amount for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on buying and selling precious metals and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 800-874-9760 or visit online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Texas Health Department is cutting off federal funding to a Houston Planned Parenthood affiliate for a nearly three-decade-old HIV prevention program, according to officials. Chris Van Dusen, the spokesman for the Texas Department of State Health Services, said, We have the discretion to extend the contract and elected not to. The service will be provided by local health departments in the area. Van Dusen did not elaborate. The contract is federally funded through the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, but managed by the state. In a letter sent to Planned Parenthood Gulf Coast on Monday, state officials said the $600,000 annual grant set to expire December 31st will be cut off indefinitely. The program, which launched in 1988, has administered more than 138,000 HIV tests and identified 1,182 people with the virus. It also tests for syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and hepatitis C. The Houston area Planned Parenthood affiliate said in a statement, it's cruel to play games with people's health care, noting that the move was politically motivated. A CDC spokeswoman said the agency does not provide money directly to Planned Parenthood and that the state is within its right to reallocate the money. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
In an unsettling video released over the web this week, Buddhist extremist cell Kamathana vowed to unleash a massive wave of serenity and nirvana all across the West. Members of the group threatened to implement such severe measures as tranquil chanting, meditation sessions, and eye-opening koans, and assured U.S. leaders of the group's absolute commitment to engulfing Americans in complete and unyielding enlightenment. Here now is a clip from the video. We will not cease until every city, from New York to London, succumbs to a state of spiritual harmony. Prepare yourself. Sources confirm that the Pentagon responded to the film by ordering immediate tactical bombings throughout Tibet. And in tech news, the inventor of the Gromdar says he's determined to put a Gromdar in every American home. In other news, a woman who had almost formed a healthy sense of self joined social media, and an area man can remember exactly where he was and what he was doing when he assassinated John F. Kennedy. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, the live Christmas Eve edition. Yes, that's right. If you're hearing our voice right now, it is live. Well, unless you're listening to a replay on the archives. But if it's Thursday night, December 24th, this is a live show. And in studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Johnson. And the holidays are coming up, and, well, I found the war on Christmas. You know, Johnson, we always hear about this war on Christmas. Well, I found it. And it's in this magical land that people always tell us that we should move. It's a libertarian utopia there, of course. People always say, if you don't like it here, move to Somalia. Well, apparently in Somalia, you cannot celebrate Christmas or New Year's. The uh, minister of religion put out a ban on both Christmas and New Year's, saying that the festivities have nothing to do with Islam. The minister of religion is Sheikh Mohammed Keroy. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And he actually, Johnson, you agree with part of what he says here. He says, we warn against the celebration of Christmas which is only for Christians. Sure. And I know that this yes. is something that you strongly stand by. You you do not believe that Christmas is a secular holiday. That is correct. I do not believe Christmas is a secular holiday. It's good to know that a majority of the planet agrees with me. Well, I don't know if a majority of the planet well, agrees with you. Well, the entire religion of Islam, this man is proclaiming to uh, represent, right? The <laughs> minister of religion for the nation of Somalia. Okay, just Somalian Muslims. Yes, so I I would love to hear from some of our Muslim friends, because we do have some Muslim friends. I I would love to hear from them. Although the more interesting uh, information that's coming out of the story is that you said they also refuse to celebrate the New Year, and I'm finding myself surprisingly ignorant. I was not aware that the uh, religion of Islam has a different calendar. Yeah, there there are several different calendars that various people use. The Jewish people have a different calendar. Their new year is sometime in the uh, early fall. I knew that one, and I knew that the Chinese have a different new year. Yes. But I was not aware that Islam had a different new year. I thought yes. That they were, uh, I thought so, that most somehow of like... the feast or the festival of Ramadan, mm-hmm. uh, which is not a feast at all. It's where you fast during the day. Oh, interesting. But that is somehow tied to the new year, I believe. Right, okay. But yes, they they do have a different calendar. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed Keroy goes on to say, "This is a matter of faith. The Christmas holiday and its drum beatings have nothing to do with Islam." He said the ministry sent letters to the police, national security, intelligence, and officials in the capital city of Mogadishu, instructing them to prevent Christmas celebrations. So not only. Are they saying you're not allowed to celebrate Christmas, but they are actually going to prevent people from celebrating Christmas? Okay. So th- this is not just an after the fact, you get a citation or get arrested or get your hand chopped off. I mean, what are they going to do? If they, you put up Christmas lights, they shoot them out one by one? They don't say how they're going to prevent. They just say that they are going to prevent they have snipers Christmas to shoot the stars off the top of the tree. The announcement has echoed what militants from the Al-Shabaab militia 
which controls the capital of Mogadishu, have been saying since 2010. Among their edicts was to ban Christmas celebrations. Did they decapitate off on the shelf on public TV? I don't know. I hope so, because that little <laughs> thing is creepy. <laughs> I, you know, you just gave me an idea oh, no. to go buy one of these elves on a shelf, or better yet, if somebody wants to send one are, are to you me. Are now going to go buy an elf on the shelf and some black, you know, black cloak and like an AK and like do like this is you? No, just like cut the head off of the elf on the shelf, <laughs> film it, and then just air it in like super slow motion <laughs> on local public access television. There is a great video that you could do uh, that would kind of mimic that, that where they take, um, have you ever heard of the Super Slow Mo guys on YouTube? Yes, I love that channel. Okay, so did you see the Elmo versus a jet engine? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. That could potentially be a good uh, slow mo for the Elf on the Shelf. I don't know. That one, even in slow motion, kind of went really fast. <laughs> it's true. Because it's a jet engine and a little stuffed animal. Yes. Although the noise was kind of funny. The <laughs> well, while Elmo was getting yes. you know, flamethrowered <laughs> alive. Was melting like the Wicked Witch of the East. I'm Wester. melting. The article here from Reuters about Somalia continues that it was not immediately clear what prompted the governmental announcement. Somalia is almost entirely Muslim, however, but it hosts thousands of African Union peacekeepers including from the majority Christian countries, Burundi, Uganda, and Kenya. The country, which is struggling to emerge from two decades of fighting and chaos, has also seen a growing number of Somalis returning from Europe and North America, sometimes bringing foreign traditions and attitudes with them. And I would say that one of those foreign traditions is the secular version of Christmas that involves Santa Claus, which has absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. Do you think they do Yankee swaps in Somalia? Or I white elephants? Probab they, they probably call it white elephant because, you know, they're in Africa and they have elephants there. Right. Or maybe they maybe Somalia is full of hipsters and they call it Yankee Swap to sound ironic. <laughs> Officials also said that Christmas celebrations may attract attacks from the militants of Al Shabaab. Uh, someone whose name I am not going to attempt to try pronouncing, who's a spokesman for the mayor of Mogadishu, told Reuters, Christmas will not be celebrated in Somalia for two reasons. All Somalis are Muslims, and there is no Christian community here. The other reason is security. I gotta Christmas say, is for Christians, not Muslims. One of my favorite things to order is Mogadishu pork. It's very delicious. Mogadishu pork? Mog Mogadishu pork, right? Isn't that that thing that comes on the little pancake, and you roll it up, and it's, like, delicious? I have absolutely <laughs> no clue. Maybe <laughs> William calling in from Nevada listening to KTOX. 1340 has some kind of idea about Mogadishu pork or why <laughs> people in Somalia can't celebrate Christmas. William, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Oh, you guys are too much. Um, I was just wondering, what are we celebrating here? Because uh, if it's based on the Bible, the wise men weren't there for nearly two years. Yeah. I thought I thought we were celebrating rampant commercialism. I thought that doesn't that isn't that the point of this like the reason for the season? I cannot argue with you. <laughs> I would, some people say it's this thing and the other thing. I'm just saying, uh, if the sheep herders were were laying in the fields, I doubt if it was snowing. I thought this was the season to celebrate how old fat men look good in red. I can't argue with that. <laughs> Anything you, else on your making, mind, William? You're making a lot of sense there. I'm just wondering if the, the sheep herders were laying in the fields and there's snow on the manger and the wise men showed up, there's something wrong with that postcard, sir. I completely agree. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize about Hebrew culture, because, yes, I, I hate to break it, to you, everybody that uh, you know thinks that Jesus was a white guy. No, he was Jewish, and according to Hebrew culture, 
prophets were generally born around the same time of year of when they died. And we know, uh, assuming that you believe the story in the Bible about Yeshua being crucified around Passover, that would mean that he was most likely born around Passover, which means born in the spring, not in the middle of winter. What I find particularly interesting is, have you seen, there's an artist, uh, an artist recently did a painting that was like rendering based on like genetic, they did like some sort of like thing where they were like, what Jesus would have actually looked like. Based yeah, that on came out re- several years ago and it just started refloating around on right. the internet recently. What I find interesting is how much Jesus actually looks like Cheech Marin from Cheech and Chong. If you do a comparison and you look at these two, this painting and Cheech Marin side by side, other than the facial hair style and the hairstyle, they look almost identical. Tis the season to celebrate the birth of Cheech Marin. 855 450 free. Your thoughts on the way. The new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism, will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the new Healing Our World is a great gift this Christmas for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web Curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free. Visit webcurfew.com. Did you know that home break-ins increase more than 100% during the holidays? It takes just 10 seconds for an intruder to kick in your door. But police response to a home alarm system is more than 20 minutes. And intruders are in and out of your home in 5 minutes. Thieves know that you're not home and have presents inside just waiting to be taken. And if you are home, how safe will you feel with an intruder lurking inside with your family? That's why police across the country are recommending you use door armor. Proven to withstand the force of a battering ram, Door Armor keeps intruders out. It's easy to install and barely visible, and your Door Armor is guaranteed for life. Go to InvasionStopper.com for a very special buy one, get one at half off deal. These savings are for a limited time and only available to GCN listeners. Protect your valuables and loved ones this holiday season. Go to InvasionStopper.com now. That's InvasionStopper.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 90% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
the new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's the live Christmas Eve edition of Free Talk Live. And yes, we will be here all through the holidays. We are not preventing people from celebrating Christmas or New Year's. We're just going to be doing it in a slightly different way. And that means we'll be on the radio. And the we tonight is Daryl and Johnson. And we are taking your calls. Joe in West Virginia wants to talk about government gifts. Should, should this be Christmas gifts or government gifts? I think it's a government Christmas gift. A government? Okay. Well, what they is the government giving us for Christmas? They're taking it. They just bought a trillion dollar deficit, so they don't think you're giving enough taxes. They want to take more money and put you further in debt. So uh, you know, it's just amazing that they tax you to death and then they want more. But isn't that what yeah, governments so, basically do? Is they take money from people and they always want more and more and more? Right, but it's sad that they uh, are mortgaging our children's future. Children and grandchildren, and probably the grandchildren's children, assuming that you know grandchildren are having children. And it's sad though; the population's getting less, and so therefore, you know, do the math. And um, it's just amazing that uh, we voted Republicans supposedly to take a smaller government, and yet they did the opposite of what they ran on. So they're a bunch of liars. <laughs> of course. So sad. Yeah, and I, I've been saying for the longest time that, you know, if you look back over the nearly 150 years that the Republicans and Democrats have been the two major parties, neither one of those parties at any point over the last 150 years has done anything to reduce the size, scope, or power of any government anywhere, but yet Republicans now love to give lip service to supporting smaller government. Bingo, exactly. And, and you know, uh, the young man, I think his name is Mark, that ran the challenge to try and get people to join a, uh, a club. The for, AMP program, five, that's uh, the Advertise, Market, $6 and $6 Promote. Right. If enough people join that, it will, like, give a voice that, hey, people really want a difference. And, you know, people coming together, most of us have to work, so we're not able to get out and voice our opinions. But if you come together and somebody can come and say, you know, this many people believe different, I think change will come over a period of time. Absolutely. Joe, thank you very much for the call. And he did mention the AMP program. That's the Advertise, Market, and Promote. And you can join the AMP program for $5 per month, as little as $5 per month. You get perks like uh, commercial-free versions of the archives of the show. There's a Facebook group, a secret private Facebook group that you get access to if you join the AMP program. And there's more. You can learn more at amp.freetalklive.com. And he did mention Mark, who is generally here on Thursdays, but he stepped away from his on-air duties last weekend. And he did say that he would consider coming back if the AMP reached a certain level. You can go to amp.freetalklive.com, sign up for the AMP program and I know that there have been a good number of new signups. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's several dozen new signups since Saturday. So uh, Joe did mention about uh, donating because sometimes you know people don't necessarily have the time to go donate their time somewhere. 
And it's one of these sort of serendipitous sort of things because I had something saved in my show prep area that somebody did some research and found that donating money may actually be better than volunteering. The report comes from CharityScience.com. They say activists tend to have a complicated relationship with money. Most of us likely grew up trying to avoid seeming ostentatious or like money. materialistic. Perhaps you did your best to hide your privilege to seem more relatable, or you had mixed feelings towards those who flaunted their wealth. It seems to be a common philosophy for activists that money is responsible for more problems than solutions. What After activists? All, what? <laughs> that's what where they're is, saying. Where is this from? CharityScience.com. Okay. They say, after all, money is the root of all evil, okay. right? Yeah. And actually, no, that's not the quote. The actual quote about money is the root of all evil, the actual quote is, the love of money is the root of all evil. Right. So it's not the money itself. It's the love of money. Uh, <clears throat> so they, they're off on their premise oh, here from the beginning. Yeah, well, they're definitely off on their premise from the beginning because if, if uh, mo- even if money were the root of all evil, then what would be the root of all money? What? What is the root of all money? Uh, um, needing a medium of exchange? Sure, needing a medium of exchange or needing to get things done. Well, money as we <laughs> know it began as a medium of exchange. Right. So that two people... Let, let's say, for instance, uh, Johnson, you've got some product and I've got some product. I want what you have, but you don't want what I have. Well, typically, we wouldn't be able to barter. Right. But introduce this thing called money that's a medium of exchange. I give you some money. You give me some product. You can then use the money to get what product you want instead of me having to search to find whatever it is you want. Right. So the, you know place where money came from is a medium of exchange. Well, doesn't that thing mean that everything is greed? Uh, it, I want to buy something. I want to buy a Christmas gift for my daughter. Therefore, I must be greedy because I'm using money. That's no, you're you're totally mis- mo- everything money is evil. Something somewhere. Mo- money yeah. is evil. It's greed. Everything's greed. They Continue following this logic, many may refute the claim that money can be a solution to the world's problems. Firstly, we tend to believe that throwing money at a complex problem is a lazy strategy that is just too simple to be effective. We believe results come from sacrifice, and writing checks is hardly sacrificial to someone. There's the word we're looking for sacrifice. And they say that writing a check is hardly sacrificial to someone for whom money is not of great importance. You're just not hurting yourself enough. That's the problem. You need to sacrifice. Secondly, giving money often fails to yield tangible results. For instance, if you donate $50 to cancer research, chances are, unless the charity is unusually transparent, you will never know where that $50 went or if it actually made a difference. By giving to charities, we must pour our trust into those charities to use our money effectively. For many, this is a difficult pill to swallow and a concern that we at Charity Science and other organizations like Give Well work to address. For this and other reasons, when most activists think about how they can make the biggest difference in the world, they think about what they can do, like volunteering at a soup kitchen, going to protest, or teaching disadvantaged youth. We do these things because the experience is visceral and real. It gives us perspective of lives less privileged. And I'll jump into where they say giving money might actually be better than giving your time. Your thoughts welcome. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't take on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 
800-287-7180. If you or someone you care about loves outdoor adventure, then check out slingbow.com for some unique holiday gift ideas. That's slingbow.com, where we have some innovative new products for the archer, hunter, or bow fishing enthusiast in your family. Now through January, use the promo code HOLIDAY to get free shipping in the U.S. or Canada. And from all of us at Slingbow Industries, have a safe, joyous, and peaceful holiday season. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Your call, your calls, welcome. We've been talking about the war on Christmas in Somalia. And that, well, apparently there's some research saying that donating money might actually be better than donating your time. Your thoughts on that or whatever is on your mind. And Johnson, in just a bit, uh, you've got a story. Apparently Americans live fairly close to their mothers. You can Basement. tell us. You, you can tell us their mother's basements. Oh, wait. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you can tell us about how you know people are going to have short commutes to family gatherings on Christmas. But before we take your calls and get back into the story, it is Christmas, and that means that you're most likely buying gifts for people. You've probably already bought all of the gifts, but if you're looking for some last minute shopping, and this would be pretty much last minute shopping give the gift 
of bumper stickers. You can reach people with the ideas of liberty from your bumper. You can reach thousands of people with a bumper sticker, and we know people read them. You love to read bumper stickers. I love to read bumper stickers. Check out the vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic liberty-oriented messages at libertystickers.com. And if you buy 100 or more stickers, you get a tremendous discount. And the the reason I mention that, like most of the time when I say, you know, you can get a really good discount if you buy 100, people are like, what am I going to do with 100 bumper stickers? Well, I used to have a car that had 53 bumper stickers on it. <laughs> And I wanted to put more, and I bought all of, I I think almost all of those stickers I bought from libertystickers.com. Had I only bought in bulk, I could have saved money. Libertystickers.com. A new vehicle could easily fit a few thousand bumper stickers. (laughs) Yeah, the Not A Bus, I could definitely fit a bunch of bumper stickers on the Not A Bus. So let's get back into this story from Charity Science. And... They started off by saying, you know, like most of the time when people are donating, they want to feel like they're doing something and writing a check doesn't really feel like doing something. You know, it's not the same as going down to the soup kitchen and doing whatever. But, you know, there are people that want to donate that might not have the time, but they have the money. They might have the time, but they don't have the skill per se. For example, Jimmy. A computer programmer made decide he wants to build a house for a poor family. But he's not a construction worker, so he's not going to build the house as well as someone that builds houses for a living. It would make more sense for Jimmy to donate money to an organization that builds houses for the poor. They write further, we need to remember that money is a tool, nothing more. Money can be used for good or evil, but is neutral in its own right. And when used for good, money is the most versatile tool we have. By giving money, we can empower a person or team to more efficiently do what they're good at. We can empower an organization to help prevent one of the major causes of disease and death in developing countries. We can empower activists to combat animal suffering We can even directly empower those less privileged than we are to make their own decisions. I don't know. This whole story to me strikes as just going against human nature or against like the nature of what people really want, which is in general, I think a lot of times with charity, having run a charity personally, I I think that people frequently are looking to have an experience and feel good about themselves. That's why they're giving in the first place. I mean, it's right. And, you know. Obviously, it's going to be different for every charity. Yeah. Because the charity that you helped put together, you needed people to physically deliver product to yeah. the less fortunate. But what I'm saying is, is I think that the people who are receiving the charity are not necessarily the primary reason for the charity happening in the first place. It's the, it's about the, the donors themselves. The donors themselves are seeking something for themselves. I, I don't think that charity has to be this act of sacrifice. Charity can be selfish and still work. You know, if the computer program wants to go build a house, let them. Yes, it might be more efficient for them to uh, donate money, and that would be great, but not everybody's looking to do that. And, you know, sometimes you have to let the computer programmer go build a house, you know, like because that's they want that experience and that's what they're doing and that's what they're willing to give Certainly. because they want that experience for themselves. And and charity is sometimes not necessarily about the people who are getting the charity. It's not necess- I don't agree with this whole like you have to sacrifice. You should just be giving a portion of your income and it should hurt. If you're so wealthy, it should you should just give until it hurts. It's like that's that's Ridiculous. actually not what they said. No, they no, said no, that no. writing a check does not feel like sacrifice if money's not an object for you. Right, if money's not an object. Or if, if money isn't an object, then you should give until it is an object, is what a lot of charities do. Right, but that, they're, they're that's not, not saying that. I'm not saying that the article's saying that. I'm saying right. that a lot of charities do say that. A lot of charities will say, like, if you're wealthy, you should give until it hurts for you to give, which means that, you know, if you're you know super wealthy, it should be millions or hundreds of thousands or whatever, you know? Right. You know, if you're uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, it should be, what, $422 billion or whatever he recently gave or something like that. To a charity that apparently he's the CEO (laughs) of. So, like, it's one of these 
things that I, I've heard some people say, it's nothing more than a tax dodge. And? Yeah. So, and so th- this guy is smart enough and rich enough to have figured out ways to avoid taxes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I, I actually read something on the Facebooks that said, Mark Zuckerberg did not create Facebook. It was handed to him by his grandfather, uh, Rockefeller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so like the, the whole claim is the Illuminati created this right, right. and just said, oh, uh, Rockefeller's got a distant grandson that's got a different name. Uh, Rockefeller, you you created this. Obviously, that's the story. Rockefeller was reading through the patents on the Model T Ford, and somehow you know, like he he scanned them, and then he scanned them into the computer, and then just Facebook came online somehow. Magic. Yeah. Yes. And then yeah, Mark and- Zuckerberg is like Rockefeller's like I scanned these Model T Ford blueprints, and here's Facebook's on. Yeah, it, it Do well made it. absolutely no sense to me, but apparently, you know, there's some people that think everything's uh, an Illuminati conspiracy. Clearly, it was the uh, reptilian lizard Jews uh, who were don't in celebrate. Of this. They, they don't celebrate Christmas, which by is the why way. they had all that extra time to make Facebook. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Although, here's an odd question: Do the reptilians celebrate Hanukkah? Uh one candle at a time, I think. And would the Somali uh, minister of religion say that no one can celebrate Hanukkah in his country because Hanukkah is not for the Muslims? I don't know. Because would, he, he did I, not come out against Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, <laughs> just Christmas. Somehow, I don't think that it was needed over there. I think that there are a lot of these, uh, a lot of the Middle Eastern countries are, you know, they don't... Uh, Know, tend to get along so well with the Jews. True. There seems to be somewhat of a feud there. And technically, Somalia is not in the Middle East. It's in Africa. Well, yeah. It, no, it I'm is saying right Islamic, near the... Islamic countries don't tend right. to get along well. But, with. you know, Somalia is right there on the, uh, I, I think, near the Persian Gulf. So, like, right. it, it's over there in that Middle Eastern area. So I could see how somebody would say, oh, Middle East. But during the George Bush presidency, George W. Bush... The term Middle East got expanded to instead of just be the Persian Gulf countries. Right. Now it's like Egypt, Africa. Right? It's all like the way over to not all of Africa, but like sorry, Morocco Somalia. to Afghanistan. Right. Is all considered the Middle East now, which okay. is no, no, it's not. Well, Agrabah is as well, certainly. Oh, right. Uh, Agrabah, the fictional land where uh, Aladdin took place and 36% of Republicans favor, or no, 30% of Republicans favor bombing Agrabah. Well, of course, it's full of thieves. 19% of Democrats favor bombing Agrabah. 36% of Democrats oppose bombing. And 57% of Republicans aren't sure whether the U.S. military should be sent into Agrabah or not. Well, they have people over there like Aladdin, who's very dangerous. I've heard he's strong as 20, strong as 20 men. So, yes, you know, that, that's, that's what I've heard. If they're making them over there. And you can tell us what you've heard of Agrabah by calling at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. 
We've had an amazing year here at Supernatural Silver. We've truly enjoyed the fantastic response from thousands of people as they've tried our extraordinary product, and we're thrilled at the life-changing results people have. Our company email is continually full of happy, satisfied customers who thank us for the help they've received from Supernatural Silver. This holiday season, as you think of gifts to give your loved ones, consider giving Supernatural Silver, a gift that can help provide good health and wellness, a gift that can change lives and make a real difference in a world where we are constantly exposed to dangerous health threats. Give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance. Give Supernatural Silver. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code HOLIDAY2015 for 20% off. And this holiday season, we wish you and yours the blessings of peace and good health from all of us here at SupernaturalSilver.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You can control your health care with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is like-minded people coming together to share medical costs, which saves money. You don't even have to pay for procedures that violate your conscience. Because we all share the same values. Join the movement of people who share in medical costs and change the way you pay for your health care forever. Go to libertyhealthshare.org to find out more. Liberty HealthShare. Together, we're changing health care for good. libertyhealthshare.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Christmas Eve edition, and we'll be live on Christmas night as well and New Year's Eve. And New Year's night, because we are not in Somalia. They are not banning us from celebrating with a live radio show while everybody else is taking days off and vacations. No, we're still working. We are still here bringing you live radio that you can participate in. You can call in 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. three. We've talked about the war on Christmas in Somalia, that charities might need your money more than they need your time. And Johnson, you're going to tell us about everybody's extremely short trip to the family holiday gathering. But first, I'm going to ask a question because I don't think you've uh, you've said this tonight. You, you, you gave out the number, but do we also have that Skype thing? We do have that Skype thing. Thank you so much. You can use the Skype thing Username is lrn.fm. You will need to send a contact request first. Please send that contact request to lrn.fm. That will get approved as soon as I get the chance to look over that computer and click approve. And, yeah, also the toll-free call at number 855-450-3733. 
Well, uh, this article here from the Daily Mail says, uh, who says Americans have no roots? The average person in the United States lives just 18 miles from their mother. So apparently a study has found that the average U.S. resident lives just 18 miles from their mother, and Americans have become less mobile, and most adults live in their hometowns. Okay, all right. So before you go any further, I just have to explain math for a moment. Because the average means that, you know, like that's the average. One guy could live a thousand miles away and another hundred people could live in their mother's house. And the average would wind up being. Do you think they're averaging in everyone who is under 18? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't they're they're so. probably only. Oh, no, it did adult. say adult. It did say adult, yeah. So, so it's only adults. But still, you know, that that's the way averages work. Average and median are not the same thing, but right. most people wind up getting those confused. Yeah. So the story continues. It's one of the most archetypal Christmas images. The hardworking son or daughter catching planes, trains, and automobiles just to make it home for the holidays. But in reality, for most Americans, it would take nothing more than a quick bus ride to make it back to mom and dad's in time for December 25th. Assuming that you live somewhere close enough to a bus station that it's worthwhile to jump on a bus. Yeah, and it seems like in most of these cases it actually could just be a cab. Um, A study has found um, something's going on with our audio here <laughs> sorry yeah I, I don't know there there is some mm. static coming over the uh network signal there but hopefully we're still on the air go yeah. ahead continue so yeah it was just uh strange for a minute because my mic could also cut out in my headphones so i was like what's going on um uh, so technical difficulties it's christmas it's krampus ghosts i don't know <laughs> anyway um uh, anyway, so they were make it, you know, it must, seems like in most of these cases they could actually just take a, a cab. Uh, you know, a study found that the recent average U.S. resident lives just 18 miles from their mother. The Upshot research discovered that over the last few decades, uh, Americans have become less mobile and most adults, especially those with less education or lower incomes, do not venture far from their hometowns. The image goes against the common perception of Americans as rootless Constantly on the move to seek opportunity, even if it means leaving family behind. Instead, it shows the country as a nation of close-knit families where multiple generations rely on each other for financial and practical support. And the figures suggest that the trend will continue, spurred on by baby boomers requiring additional care later in life and the growing number of low-income families who need help with the low cost of ch- or with the high cost of child care. Uh, the Culture of caring is not well rewarded in this country, said Ann Tumlinson, health care policy analyst who writes about elder care at daughterhood.org. All right. So before you continue, I, I'm still baffled by apparently the thought that British people have that Americans just move all over willy nilly. <laughs> and from my experience, and I have moved a lot of times, I've lived all over the country my experience is that the vast majority of people that I run into never leave their hometown. Sure, but it would make absolute sense for that someone from a foreign country who meets only people who are traveling to foreign countries would think that because I would think that the majority of people who are traveling to foreign countries are not in the lower income scales right? and are not you know, the type of people who are going to stay close to home because they're going to visit other countries. Right, and when, when I say the vast majority of people that I've experienced never leave their hometown, I'm not saying they never move out of their hometown i'm saying they never travel outside of the county right like they stay there i got no reason to go anywhere else yeah <laughs> and i've actually heard people say that i'm so- i got no reason to go anywhere else I-, I don't need to go to no big city like pittsburgh i'm so weirdly atypical again you know the, the whole free state project but like just in throughout my life you know i've done things like boarding schools and just traveled around and you know went to i decided to go to college you know away from my family like halfway across the country and so like the majority of people that i've ever surrounded myself with i've always been people who are like not even close to home like you know and especially that's especially true of free to free state project participants right. i mean they we're people that have moved Yes. You know, in general. Yeah, I I was actually talking to a Free State Project participant a couple days ago because she had asked me, where'd you move from? 
said, moved from Texas. I'm originally from Alabama. What about you? She was like, oh, it was easy for me. I just drove up from Connecticut. Right. It's like, yeah. And you can find out more about the Free State Project by going to freestateproject.org. We're currently over 90% of the goal of reaching 20,000 signers. Those signers are indicating that... Where did you have this conversation, just out of curiosity? With someone that I was picking up pig food. Where? So locally? Locally. Okay. Uh, A town just outside of Keene. That person must have been from a very rural area of Connecticut, because there is a significant difference between most of Connecticut, I would say, and even here in New Hampshire. It's a lot more rural here than... I mean, it's a shorter distance than certainly from Texas or Alabama, but... um, in terms of like culturally, it's still fairly different. It's least still New England. Yeah, it's still New England, but it's you know a level of you know if it, if you had had that conversation with someone, if you had told me that you had had that conversation like Manchester and Nashua, like I would be like, okay, that makes sense. It's about the same same type of culture, you know, same New England culture, but it's a little bit more of that like kind of bigger town, you know, small city kind of feel, which is what most of Connecticut is. There are some areas of Connecticut, especially in like northwestern Connecticut or northeastern Connecticut. No, western. Eastern. Middle of nowhere. There, there are <laughs> middle of nowhere parts I'm of Connecticut. To, yeah, yeah, middle of nowhere parts of Connecticut and northeastern Connecticut mostly uh, is Cowtown country. Um, and that's a little bit more like what a lot of New Hampshire is. Um, but – you know, it's it's definitely closer. I moved uh, from Florida originally and, and then skipped into Connecticut for a little while and then moved to New Hampshire. So I made a hop, skip, and a jump. But uh, And we're, we're both here for the Free State Project, right. meaning that we signed a statement of intent saying that we intend to, within five years of the Free State Project reaching its goal of 20,000 people, to move to New Hampshire to make the fullest practical effort to achieving a society in which the maximum role of government is the protection of life, liberty, and property. I really, you know, I found myself talking to some people recently and speculating on what the cultural shift is going to be in the Free State Project once the the move is triggered, and what type of person, what what type of person different. Like, what's the difference and what's the personality type more likely, not to say that everyone who comes up after the move is triggered is going to be have the same personality type, but there are probably going to be some similarities amongst people who are willing to move after the move is triggered versus before. Right, because the, the, the people and, that are moving now, the <laughs> early movers, for the most part, mm-hmm. fall into one of two categories, younger and just a little more mobile, not... Right yet married they don't have family you know they don't have these roots that the brits think that no americans have (laughs) or they're older not quite retired possibly retired own their own business and able to move the business that's what mark warden uh from porcupine real estate did he moved his business here and you have other people that are able to move a business. You've got people that are older, retired, and then you've got the younger crowd. But yes, after the move is triggered, you are going to have people that are going to fall into, I would say, slightly different categories than the early movers. But yeah, I, I don't really know what those categories are going to right. be. It's going to be really interesting to see like what the what the different cultures. But they will are all be more than eighteen miles from their mother, yep. and we'll tell you more about that. Stay tuned. This is Free Talk Live, eight fifty five, four fifty free. A deeper level and has over thirteen hundred updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the new Healing Our World is a great gift this Christmas for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a five dollar discount. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of .211 Bitcoin or more. 
Silver and gold, silver and gold. How do you measure its worth? Just by the pleasure it gives here on earth. Robertson Roberts Brokerage hopes you have a happy holiday season and a prosperous 2016. We're available 24 7 at rrbi.co or call 800 874 9760. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, December 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.31 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,073 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $456. Antiwar.com reports, though the Iraqi military secured no gains in Wednesday's fighting in Ramadi, they bragged about a huge death toll among the Islamic State fighters, claiming hundreds of fighters from the Islamic State were killed since Tuesday and the city would be totally retaken in a matter of days. The death toll is noteworthy because they'd only estimated a couple of hundred the Islamic State fighters left in the entire city on Monday, and despite claiming once again to have killed at least that many, there seemed to be more than a few remaining. Iraqi officials first moved into Ramadi earlier this month and have been predicting victory in a matter of days ever since. The hope is to have it done by year's end. The Islamic State has held the city since May and still holds key central portions, including provincial capital buildings. A large number of civilians are still believed to be trapped in the city, though dozens were reported to have escaped into government-held areas as fighting raged into the afternoon on Wednesday. The city initially had around half a million residents, but the on-again, off-again fighting there, as with much of Iraq, has left many displaced. In 1999, Daryl W. Perry began a search for traditional values, which led him down a path to the ideas of liberty. He tells the story in A Rebel's Journey, My Path to Liberty. Of the book, Dr. Brian Sovereign says, Sometimes it's funny, and sometimes I think it's crazy, but it's always authentic. Find A Rebel's Journey, My Path to Liberty by Daryl W. Perry on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, ask for A Rebel's Journey wherever books are sold, or visit arebelsjourney.com. UPI reports Virginia will stop honoring most out-of-state concealed carry permits, a move to tighten gun control laws without involving the legislature. State Attorney General Mark R. Herring announced the plan Tuesday. Virginia will no longer honor the permits from 25 states with which it currently has a reciprocity agreement. Herring said, while you are here in Virginia, you are subject to the Commonwealth's gun laws. He added that the 25 states have relatively lax gun laws compared to those in Virginia. The state's new policy, which goes into effect in February, is one which a number of state governors are adopting to address gun violence without expecting Republican-controlled legislatures to change gun laws. Although visitors to Virginia can still obtain non-resident permits to carry concealed handguns if they meet the state standards, Chris Cox of the National Rifle Association's Institute for Legislative Action said, This decision is both dangerous and shameful. Shameful. At a time when people are scared and desperately need the ability to defend themselves, Herring has chosen the path of making self-defense harder. Agreements with West Virginia, Michigan, Oklahoma, Texas, and Utah will remain in place. For nearly 40 years, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage has been a trusted source for buying and selling precious metals like gold and silver. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and have permanently removed the minimum purchase amount for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on buying and selling precious metals and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 800-874-9760 or visit online at rrbi.co. 
Reuters reports the Texas Health Department is cutting off federal funding to a Houston Planned Parenthood affiliate for a nearly three-decade-old HIV prevention program, according to officials. Chris Van Dusen, the spokesman for the Texas Department of State Health Services, said, We have the discretion to extend the contract and elected not to. The service will be provided by local health departments in the area. Van Dusen did not elaborate. The contract is federally funded through the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, but managed by the state. In a letter sent to Planned Parenthood Gulf Coast on Monday, state officials said the $600,000 annual grant set to expire December 31st will be cut off indefinitely. The program, which launched in 1988, has administered more than 138,000 HIV tests and identified 1,182 people with the virus. It also tests for syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and hepatitis C. The Houston area Planned Parenthood affiliate said in a statement, it's cruel to play games with people's health care, noting that the move was politically motivated. A CDC spokeswoman said the agency does not provide money directly to Planned Parenthood and that the state is within its right to reallocate the money. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shoppers at a Hannaford supermarket could only speculate that the middle-aged woman angrily demanding a price check on a pack of rice pudding was once a carefree youth. I don't care what it says on your screen. You know, this is why people go to the store across the street, because of the way they're treated here. You know, nobody likes it here. Those watching the woman angrily asking for a manager over a $1.20 price difference imagined that the woman was once a fresh-faced college graduate, too spirited and fun-loving to throw a bitter tantrum in front of a room of complete strangers. She was probably once just some freewheeling college kid, you know? Her biggest concern was which one of her friends she was going to hang out with at night and whether they were going to meet at the movies or a bonfire on the beach. Now look at her. You know, I'll bet if you'd have told her 10 or 15 years ago that one day she'd be ripping into a grocery store clerk with a room full of strangers staring at her, she'd have been horrified. It's sad. In other news, a few years in the military would have really straightened out a troubled teen killed in Afghanistan, and a man on the verge of self-realization instead turns to God. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, the live Christmas Eve edition. We've been pretty much all over the map, unlike the average American who lives just 18 miles from their mother. We've been talking about the war on Christmas in Somalia, that charities might need your money more than they need your time. And, of course, the report from the Daily Mail that the average American lives only 18 miles from their mother. And there's a little bit more on that that we're going to cover here in a moment. But we are taking your calls. You can call in toll-free 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. Or... You can do like what Nathan is doing and call in on the Skype. And Nathan, you were on Free Talk Live with Daryl and Johnson, and you want to talk about the solution to world poverty? Uh, that is true. And uh, also, by the way, he had the strength of 10, 10 regular men. I think oh, 10 was. regular men. Who had yes, the strength definitely. of 10 regular men? Ali Ababwa. <laughs> you mean so, I mean. Yes. Uh, on the counter argument, though, not since it's not every soldier in Agrabah who has the strength, it's not that big a threat to uh, their security interests. So, well, as a friend of mine said on Facebook, the good thing that there is an upside if the U.S. military does bomb Agrabah, only cartoon characters will be hurt. It will not be real men and women and children like what have been killed in. Syria and Iraq and Yemen and Pakistan and Afghanistan and Somalia and Libya and all of the other countries that the U.S. military has bombed with flying robots. But Nathan, that's not what you called in about. You called in about world poverty. So, I, I, t- I find right, your so, racism here against cartoons to be yeah, very I was bad. Say, this, this I was really racist. not pleased when uh, the judge was trying to build that freeway through uh, Toontown. That was really depressing. And Roger Rabbit. And I really don't think that government projects should be allowed to, you know, do these like sort of like, you know, right, cartoons so. aren't real. <laughs> Uh, but in in Roger Rabbit, they in fact off, are. <laughs> the cartoons will be better off without government intervention. So uh, exactly so on, on to Peter Singer. So, <laughs> yeah. 
So Johnson brought up this this issue before of um, why people give to charity. And it made me think of this essay that I read in high school by Peter Singer called uh, like Peter Singer's Solution to World Poverty or the Solution to World Poverty. Um, I'm guessing you guys have read it, but for the for the audience, it, you would be guessing incorrectly, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'll briefly describe it. It uh, he he describes two situations. Um, one, a woman named Dora, it, like sells a kid or something, and finds out that he's going to be killed, and then feels guilty and buys him back. And then in the second example, and this is the main one I want to focus on, he he describes a hypothetical scenario where uh, a guy named Bob has just bought a, a big uh, a Bugatti for a large amount of money, and it's sitting on the railroad track, and you know on the other railroad track is a kid, and he 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 has no interaction with this kid, he doesn't know who he is, but since there's a train coming and he's gone for a walk, he has the option to flip the switch and save the child by you know having the train destroy his Bugatti. And uh, and so in the essay, he he decides that, or he he implies that if you if you believe Bob did the right thing by ignoring the kid and you know letting the kid die, then you're you're a monstrous person. And then and then he goes on to describe, oh well, you know we could we could each of us save a, a person in the third world by donating about two hundred dollars, and you know then he provides a citation for that, and then closes by. By making a logical leap, which is, uh, you know, he suggests that well, you could spend every extra cent, everything that's not a luxury item. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't define what a luxury is, but, you know, anything that's not a luxury, or anything that's spent on luxury items, you could, you could uh, divert that and spend money, you know, to save someone's life. Um, okay, so hold on. Let, let's go back to this mythical switch on the railroad that people mm -hmm. love throwing up these things of. You're on a train track, and there's a switch, and you could flip it, and this would happen. And if you don't flip it, this other thing would happen. I've right. walked along railroads a bunch of times, and I've never seen a switch. Ever. <laughs> um, uh, they're on every single railroad ever. No, not some little mythical, if I push the button, uh, then... Yeah, it's a big lever that has another lever on it. You push the two together, and then you push the thing forward, and it switches the track. That's how they work. In a I, lot of I've cases now, they're, they're automated. And like the, That's the switch uh, that they're talking the about. In the junction areas, yeah. but not just walking down a train track that well, has no junction about. anywhere. No, they're talking about a junction. There has to be multiple tracks, so there's a junction in the tracks. There has to be a thing, a fork. That's what this problem is always talking about. Is there has to be like a Y in the tracks, and then there are two tracks. Right, and those are only in very specific areas that are generally right near the loading and unloading areas for train and tracks. And that's where these supposed— And there's more than one track that the thing could then divert off to. True, but this experiment is generally thought of, you know, to be like kind of an older this days. This experiment and the, and the guy is like has complete a, BS. The guy has like a mustache it... and it's like twi you know, like he, he twines and he's got like a big top hat. And and, and here's, it's like he's here's got a little dog that lasts like. <laughs> here's my second question about this mythical switch, and you know, like I'm walking down and there's a switch and the car and the train and the other thing. Why am I the only person that's close enough to the switch to actually push the little button? Well, it's a good thing you brought that up, Daryl, because that, that's actually a common objection to, to this idea. Because, of course, the analogy is that the kid in the third world country, right, is the kid on the track. And you, as the rich uh, American, have the or whatever, have the option to, you know, donate some a small amount of money, which is sort of like flipping the switch. Although I, I think it's a little disingenuous to suggest that you should or you should just give away everything you have. And that was a. Uh, it's kind of a, it's almost a logical leap, but not really, because in the essay, he specifies this car represents your life savings. Yeah, like you so saved up everything you have and bought this Bugatti. If people want more information about this, by the way, there's a Wikipedia entry. This is like a common philosophical question. It's called the trolley problem. Um, and it's asked in multiple different ways. And most of the times when the way this question is asked, there's not a Bugatti on the other track. It's one person versus like five people or, you know, that's, it, I mean, well, if somebody handed you a time machine right now, would you go back into the past and kill baby Hitler? 
<laughs> and I actually had somebody ask me that question, and I said, I'm not playing your stupid game. <laughs> yeah, and but then they got up upset the, because well, Darryl, I called you could their pick game up the phone, stupid. You could pick up the phone right now or you know, use your Bitcoin wallet or whatever and donate exactly $200 to UNICEF, which is what he says in the essay. Right. So I'm not Why saying Why would I donate a to a charity. government agency? But, right, right. But here, here's I the think, thing about the trolley problem. And the, the thing is, is that, you know, like the trolley problem is one of the one of the ways that I realized, like, oh, I guess I'm a true libertarian because I am one of 0.2% of people or something like that. Like the amount of people who answered the trolley problem the way that I did and apparently the way that Daryl did is extremely small, extremely uh -huh. small. And the answer to that is like when the, in the typical trolley problem, the, the classic one is that, you know, there's you are coming along, yeah. you're walking along a train one track, there's a switch, five. one person versus five person or five people. And, you know, you have the opportunity, you know, like, you know that this is set up by a dastardly villain who sets yes. this up and one person dies or five persons dies. You know, do you throw the switch to save the five people because the train's going to barrel down the five people, you know, to save the one person? And I say, I'm not touching the switch because it's not my business. Like, I'm not supposed to be involved. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know all the details. Why, why can I, the conductor not put on the brakes? Right. Like right. who knows if like the, the 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 five people are all like already dead or like terminally ill, and the one person is like, you know, this is yeah, just because you're responsible for that. Right. One. If you flip the switch, you're taking you're responsible. responsibility for for an action. And my res my response is, I'm not responsible at all in this situation. I this person is crazy. I'm not doing anything. And, and here. why can the people not move off of the train track? They're tied down. This is the whole like dastardly villain situation. But see, Nathan didn't say that the one kid was tied down. He just said there's a kid on the tracks. And that kid could be like five-year-old Daryl that was walking right. down a train track and there was a train from behind me and I never heard right. the thing. Why don't you just yell at the kid and say, kid, throw the brake on the Bugatti and press the gas. And that way the kid just gets into the Bugatti and drives off, and then you save both of them. So you're advocating five-year-olds driving cars on train tracks. That is incredibly irresponsible well, of you, Well, it's better Johnson. than the five-year-old sitting on the train tracks and doing nothing, you know, like that. Yes. You so, know, if you so, could just shout at the kid and say, kid, move the car. So, Johnson, would you say that someone is doing a wrong thing if they don't contribute to charity at all ever? Or, well, like, what do you think the ethical No, I don't think anybody is? has an obligation to ch contribute to charity ever. Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that's what yeah. you meant. No. Yeah. I don't. I don't think anybody has. I think it's a good thing to do, and I think if you have, you know, the ability to, sure. I mean, but I, you know, there's more to say on this for by me for sure. I'll, I'll say more when you come back. All right. Listen up, because this is the most important thing you're going to hear all day. What if I said you could make money flipping houses without any cash, credit, or manual labor? And what if I said you could do it part time from the comfort of your home? Sound unflippin' believable? Hi, I'm Preston Neely, and I'm gonna prove it by sending you a free copy of my smash hit selling book, How to Get Rich in Real Estate. It sells online for $19.95, but I'm giving away 5,000 free copies this week. To get one before they're gone, call 1 800 961 8439. I used to be so broke, I had my electricity shut off nine times. But I figured out a simple way to make money flipping houses without even breaking a sweat. Now I'm living the good life, and so should you. Listen, if you're sick and tired of stressing about money, this book could change your life. Hands down, it's the fastest, easiest way to get started in real estate. Let me prove it. Call right now to find out how to get your free book. When they're gone, they're gone. Call 1-800-961-8439. 961 8439 Concerned about harmful contaminants in your water? Look to ProPure, the most trusted name in gravity water filtration systems. ProPure, with the silver-infused Pro1 G2.0 filter, removes over 200 contaminants, including VOCs, heavy metals, chloramines, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, fluorides, and radiologicals. We don't just say it, we back it up. The Pro1 G2.0 filter is NSF 42 certified and independently tested to meet NSF. SF 53 and P231 standards. Pro Pure Water, the way nature meant it to be. Clean, crisp, and refreshing. Purchase with confidence in quality, performance, and customer service. Take advantage of our biggest holiday 25% off sale going on now. Visit your authorized Pro Pure dealer or ProPureUSA.com. That's P R O P U R U S A.com. Or call 800 544 3533. 800 544 3533. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Your calls welcome 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And in studio live tonight on Christmas Eve, it's Daryl and Johnson. And Johnson, you had more that you wanted to say on the solving the world's poverty problems. Just about charity in general. Uh, mythical, you're walking down a train track and there's a button and something, something. Well, you know, uh, we were asked right before break, you know, do you think you sh- that people should give to charity, uh, you know, that everyone should be obligated in some way of giving to charity? And I said, no, that I don't think that people should give to charity. Uh, there should be, should feel an obligation to give to charity at all. But I was going to say that, you know, I feel like, that if you have the capability to give to charity that you have, you know, if you've got enough money, then probably you should. But then I thought about that some more. And, you know, I don't necessarily know whether or not most charity is actually harmful. I, I, I you know, I kind of, you know, and people, a lot of people hate this and hate this whole philosophy of, uh, you know, Ayn Rand. But um, I definitely question whether or not charity is any good. Giving people things is not generally a way to make people better off. Right. And in most cases. That there are various kinds of charity. There there are the handouts. Yep. And then there's the hand up sort of charity. Right. So, you know, it, it depends on if you're donating to the handout or the hand up. Right. So so uh, some sort of charity that helps people learn a job skill. Right. That's more a hand up than a handout, but it's still technically charity. Sure. I mean, it, it, the best charity quote unquote i think is generally generated when there's a win-win situation like for example hiring someone yes but people wouldn't call that charity right but, but in a way every, it is but not everybody has the ability to hire someone well, yeah, and of course create not. a job right, of course so not. Yeah. all right what's the next best thing i can donate money to you know the food bank that right. will help people do something or i can donate to this organization or that organization and then there's the charities that don't really have any, you know, like really visible, tangible uh, benefit per se, but still contribute to society at large, such as art museums. You know, you donate to an art museum, they generally get up to 75% of their funding from private sources. Right. And I would say that that 
contributes to a better society overall. It allows people to go see pretty paintings and sculptures and learn stuff that they would not otherwise learn or see if that museum did not exist. You could donate to the theater. Yes, and I, I actually occasionally will go to the theater. Former uh, Tuesday night co-host Johnny Ray's actually quite frequently in plays here around Keene. And I recently went to go see an Av- an Agatha Christie production. Well, Agatha Christie didn't produce it, but it was a, a play that, you know, written by Agatha Christie. Apparently it's been running in London since the 50s, the longest running play in the world. And as per tradition, I will not spoil it for you, but it was The Mousetrap. I highly recommend it if you've never seen it. And if you're, you know, home with your kids, you can just play a mousetrap. Yeah, that game never actually <laughs> works the way it's supposed to. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. That's like the original Rube Goldberg machine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So speaking of kids and raising kids and all these things, we were talking a while ago uh, about uh, how people have not moved very far from their mothers. Yes, and apparently the people over in Great Britain believe that Americans are just these mobile people that don't ever place down roots. And, well, that's actually not what uh, research indicates. So the story uh, goes on. You go from raising your kids and dealing with all the challenges of compromising your career that come along with that. Then all of a sudden, you're thrust back into a caregiving role. Uh, This quote is from uh, the uh, Ann Tumlinson, a healthcare policy analyst who writes about other care at daughterhood.org. Geographically, families in the Northeast and the South tend to tend to stay nearby, while those in the East Coast and the Mountain States generally are further apart. Uh, the study found that the average American lives 18 miles from their mother, with just one in five living more than two hours' drive from their parents. It concluded that education and income are the biggest determinants for why people would move away from their homes. Those with college and professional degrees are much more likely to live farther from their parents than those with a high school education. Geographically, families in the Northeast and the South tend to stay nearby, while those on the East Coast and in the mountain states are generally further apart. Culture is also thought to play a key role. Hispanic households are much more likely to provide in-person care, while European households are much more likely to provide financial support, according to research led by Natalia Sarkeesian, a sociologist studying families at Boston College. All right, so the way they wrote that last paragraph, it could lead one to believe that there's a large amount of Hispanics in New England, and that's absolutely not the case at all. Yeah, actually, you you kind of make a point there with a being closer together i don't know that it's interesting um there is a map uh which is kind of interesting um that shows you know which states are closer or further apart or which sorry which states have people that live closer or further apart from their mothers um and and some of these are broken down into regions or sub-regions that i've never seen in this sort of manner before So they've Alabama got- is included here. You're breaking the mold. Apparently in Alabama, it's uh, I think that's Alabama, right? Yeah, it's uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky are grouped together in a region, and generally Kentucky is not grouped in with Alabama in anything. Well, apparently in living close to your mother, your mother it apparently is generally that region is the they live the closest within six miles generally. And then Pennsylvania is grouped in with New Jersey and New York. They're the next closest at eight miles. And Pennsylvania is actually one of the places that I live to where most of the people that I interacted with had never traveled outside of like the tri-county area. Yep. And then New England, uh, 12 miles. Uh, Then Texas, uh, Louisiana, um, and I... Oklahoma and Arkansas. Oklahoma and Arkansas are uh, 21 miles. 21 miles. Um, And I wonder how much some of this has to do with the fact that some of these areas are fairly spread out. So, for instance, in Texas, 
you've got a city in basically the middle of nowhere with 100,000 people and the next closest town is 40, 50 miles away. That, well, that would make sense for that area, but it doesn't necessarily make sense for the southeast, which is the next one, which is 23 miles. And that's doesn't necessarily make as much sense. Right, but if you look at Florida, again, you've got you know people that'll move from one end of the state to the other, so that skews the numbers a little bit as well. Whereas most of Georgia, you know, you're moving 23 miles. If you're in Atlanta, that's one side of the city to the other. Right. So, you know, some some of these distances, it might look like, oh, 23 miles, but then it's just opposite side of the city. Well, what do you think on this? Call in 855-450-FREE or Skype LRN.FM. This is the live Christmas Eve edition of Free Talk Live. Owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't take on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 800-287-7180. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job Job seekers and making all the other conversations you have more productive, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. We're talking about piracy. The Barbary pirates were attacking um, American merchant ships and taking the sailors into slavery. Yep. Um, uh, which is a little worse than conscribing them like England was. England was just making them, you know, do a little bit of work. I mean, it certainly was slavery, but to a much lesser extent. <laughs> um, when, Did they get the doubloons? That's what I want. When, the, Avast. <laughs> when somebody from the Sudan takes you into slavery, uh-huh. you're in slavery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's slavery in its uh, raw sense. Mm-hmm. So he sent over the Navy in order, um, was it? Well, that's the risk you take I'm on the high seas. Trying to think of uh, this, this famous uh, American pirate, but I can't remember his name offhand. Blackbeard. Now, now Red Redbeard. <laughs> no. Goldbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Maroonbeard. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Christmas Eve edition of the show in studio tonight. It's Daryl and Johnson. And hopefully you've done your Christmas shopping. If not, well, it's definitely too late to get things shipped by tomorrow, but you can still get good discounts, pre-Christmas discounts. You don't have to wait on the after-Christmas discounts to save big when you save at purse using saveatpurse.com. You can get 25 30 35% or more off the things that you're going to buy anyway from Amazon. Just go to saveatpurse.com. I've recently had orders purchased at 35 and 50%, though don't expect to get 50% on everything. And the order that I put in for 50%, something that I totally did not expect to wind up getting bought, got bought after two days where you basically you you place a bid, you put your items in a wish list, put the wish list on in the uh, toolbar there at saveitpurse.com, name your discount, or you can do 5% instant buy. It gets fulfilled instantly. But I put in, you know what, I, I just want to see what happens, put in 50% for a discount, and two days later, I get notice that the uh, items that I wanted had been purchased. I'm still waiting on it to confirm that the items have been shipped, but you know, hopefully it winds up getting shipped in a couple days. But things at 20% generally fulfilled you know, within a matter of hours, and you can save, again, up to 25% or more using Bitcoin. That's the catch. You've got to use Bitcoin when you save at purse, saveatpurse.com. Johnson, we were talking earlier about charity, and not all charity is tangible, you know, like you're giving right. somebody something. I mentioned art museums, and I, I enjoy going to art museums, and it's something that I wish we had more of in the area. But one thing that I don't think I've ever actually seen is a Picasso, and apparently... The people that run Cards Against Humanity, and they've done some weird stunts before. On Black Friday, they had a buy nothing for $5 and wound up selling like $70,000 worth of nothing. <laughs> What's their newest uh, gag that they're doing here, or shtick, or whatever? Well, we should talk about what Cards Against Humanity is. It's, yes. It's a card game for terrible people, I think is how they build it. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically, if you have a family and you've ever played Apples to Apples, think of an adult version of that, and then it's probably still worse than whatever you're imagining. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, a lot of the cards are things that we could not read on the radio, but some of them, you know, you, you could do a radio-friendly version. It would just be incredibly difficult to do. Right. <laughs> uh, but it, it's a very fun game where I, I'll just give you the premise. So you've got one person that reads a card, sort of a Mad Lib style card to where right. you read and then everybody else has to fill in the blanks. Generally so, completing a sentence. Right. Completing a sentence or, you know, complete the name of a movie. So, you know, M. Night Shyamalan's latest movie is blank. Right. And you have to fill in the blank. And so whomever has the card, that the person reading the card with the blanks finds the most humorous. They wind up getting points. And there are various ways you can play. You, you can create house rules. I've seen where people have turned it into a drinking game. Uh, and the cards generally say horrible things, you know. Uh, strip cards against humanity to where the person will say, this is the winner, this is the loser. And then the loser removes an item of clothing. They can gain an item of clothing back by turning in two of their awesome points. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the people that made this game for horrible adults, uh, that, that's how they bill it. Uh, they're doing something interesting with some art. So they have bought a Picasso and they're threatening to chop it into bits and give it away. 
Okay. <laughs> so they this uh, article asks, how would you like to own one fifteen thousandth of a Picasso? How big is the Picasso? Uh, large enough to chop into one hundred fifty thousand pieces. Well, anything could be <laughs> chopped into one hundred fifty thousand pieces. I don't imagine would that the it would be pieces a very large be piece. visible at the it, end. I, I don't imagine it would be a very large piece, but I don't like, know. You know. Are the pieces the size of like a grain of salt? I don't know. Are the pieces you know like a millimeter by a millimeter? I you know, still don't know, but I'm imagining very very small. Okay, but probably would have to be at least you know like. You know, a millimeter by a millimeter, a couple of millimeters by a couple of millimeters, just so they would be able to have something to grab onto and mail. Um, yes. So it's asking this question of, you know, whether or not they would like to own that <laughs> of its customers who subscribed to its eight sensible gifts for Hanukkah. I guess it's a, some sort of a promotional plan that they're running. Sort okay. of. Okay. Sort of. Uh, each year, Irreverent Kickstarter funded card game offers a holiday special card pack of sorts. This year, it was the Hanukkah-themed uh, eight sensible gifts, consisting of eight individual presents mailed out over the course of the eight-night Jewish holiday. Last year, the Cards Against Humanity team gave away one square foot of a private island in Maine to the okay. 250,000 um, uh, people who... Uh, sorry, this is cut off. All uh, right, so on. tell us more about the Cards Against Humanity thing after we go to your calls and your thoughts zach calling in from ithaca new york wants to talk about twitter what's on your mind there zach well uh feliz navidad there uh everybody happy christmas and i hope everyone uh gets to watch die hard with their families tomorrow i'm gonna start <laughs> up by saying that uh we were talking about uh you guys sent out a message on Twitter about John McAfee, who is like the space cadet uh, antivirus millionaire guy, running for uh, allegedly saying you know he wants to be a libertarian uh, candidate and so on and so forth. What I was wanted to actually talk about was like the larger kind of like uh, completely off the chain theatrical ridiculous level that this election has taken to the point where you know. Trump, who everyone thought would be dead in a week, not dead, sorry, but uh, you know, his campaign would be You thought his campaign like, would be dead. He's, he's leading in the polls, you know, and it's like 80 degrees and all that. Uh, so I was going to suggest to people to watch the movies uh, Bob Roberts, Bullworth, and Wag the Dog, which are three of my favorite movies, especially, they kind of represent my political outlook a lot, and I can kind of briefly detail each one if you'd like. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I've never heard of Bob Roberts, and I don't remember what you said the name of that second one is. I did see Wag the Dog, which is in a lot of ways intended to sort of tell the story of Bill Clinton's presidency. I have a question for you, and I want you to be completely honest with me. Do you have any more of those tasty crab cakes? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> can you play that line back again? No, it's really uh, – really, uh... Bullworth is the story of uh, what's his name? Warren Beatty plays a Democratic senator who gets so fed up with himself and disgusted with himself, he calls out a hit on himself and then goes out on the campaign trail and just starts running his mouth and saying what he actually thinks. And then he turns into this whirlwind of everybody's like, "Oh, this guy's crazy. We got to listen to him." He's actually been up for five days and he starts rapping, and it's kind of a funny movie. In the end, he—I uh, don't want to spoil it for you—but it's fantastic, very, very funny. And I think it, Warren Beatty had worked for a long time to like kind of put that movie together. Yeah. Uh, can I can I just kind of describe uh, what Bob Roberts is because this one that one is like an amazing. That's the only one I haven't seen out of all of those. That is uh, Tim Robbins plays a right wing folk singer, like an anti Bob Dylan, basically running for uh, Senate against uh, Senator Brickley Paste. He's a brick and mortar Democrat, you know, uh, played by uh, Gore Vidal. And this is set, uh, you know, in the backdrop of the uh, like the 19, I think, 90 uh, presidential election. Jack Black has one of his earliest roles and actually sings on the soundtrack. He plays the guy who becomes obsessed with and devoted to Bob Roberts. It's also it's kind of like a mockumentary, hmm. uh, but it's very, very funny. It's got all these people, all these character actors who are friends of uh, Tim Robbins. who He made the mo movie for like four million bucks. Zach, but thank you also, so much for your. Or you know what? You you might have more. So I, I I'll bring you back here in just a moment. And your thoughts also welcome. Eight fifty five, four fifty, free.
I was coming out of the hardware store when I saw him. An old man, late 70s, hunched over in the freezing rain, no hat on his head, limping across that slippery parking lot and pushing a row of shopping carts toward the cart corral. It's heartbreaking. Millions of hardworking Americans simply don't have enough money to retire, so they just keep working and working and working until it's too late. Hi, I'm Chad Stubbs, president and CEO of Power Trader, and I believe that's just plain wrong. That's why I'm now distributing to the public absolutely free copies of Power Trader's game-changing book on how regular folks can make the money they need to retire fast. For your free copy, call 1-800-771-6706. Don't let the lack of money rob you of your retirement. Call now for details and get your free copy of this book before it's too late. 1-800-771-6706. But hurry while supplies last. 1-800-771-6706. 1-800-771-6706. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-704-6182. A Place for Mom offers free one-on-one -on -one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, A Place for Mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-704-6182. That's 1-800-704-6182. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Christmas Eve edition in studio tonight. It's Daryl. And Johnson. And we've been all over the place and we'll bring Zach back here in just a second. Uh, I think he had more that he wanted to talk about. He was calling specifically because he saw something that got posted on Twitter, I believe by the Free Talk Live Twitter feed about John McAfee, the antivirus guy, has announced that he's now seeking the Libertarian Party's nomination for president. 
He did create his own party a while back, the Cyber Party, and I suspect he figured out how extremely difficult it is to get on the ballot as a minor party talking. candidate. I'm wondering if that party is just about people sitting around cybering. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I had asked the question somewhere that was, you know, somewhere he had posted something like, you know, what's the plans for ballot access and never got a response. And so I suspect that he found out how incredibly difficult it is that in order to get on the ballot in all 50 states, you need nearly 1 million valid signatures in the various states. Some states require a lot more than others. And there are already deadlines that have passed for petitions being turned in. So that is why I suspect he decided that he is going to jump into the Libertarian Party race and we'll see what winds up happening at the Libertarian Convention in Orlando over Memorial Day weekend. But Zach called in because basically you said that you're seeing this election cycle as sort of, you know, real life adaptations of several movies that you're a fan of. One called Bob Roberts. Uh, another one. Bullworth. I, Bullworth. Yeah, Bullworth. I almost said Moose Knuckle, but I knew that wasn't right. <laughs> and then uh, the third one was Wag the Dog. Yes, and to just I'll real quickly summarize that one. Uh, the president basically has a little sexual liaison with a – they call her a firefly girl, but the idea is that she's a Girl Scout – in the office behind the Oval Office. So they stage a fake war with Albania to keep the story out of the headlines for 11 days until the election. And it's a, re it's a comedy, but it's also – all three of these movies, what they have in common is that they have a kind of a deeply cynical uh, perspective on the political process. And within the world of these movies, and I think in real life, the average person is uh, very easily uh, lied to, manipulated, and uh, you know is, has very limited access to information. As uh, Dan Aykroyd put it, put it in uh, Tommy Boy, what the American public doesn't know is what makes them the American public, if you understand what I'm kind of getting at. Have you uh, have you seen the movie by uh, that's uh, starring Kelsey Grammer and uh, Carrie Elwes uh, that's about the Bradley fighting vehicle? I have not. Uh, just oh, is it with a? Was it? Was that? Go ahead. I, I would just look up to sell look, it to the look it up on IMDb. I don't know exactly. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name of the movie right now. Um, but it's uh, stars Ke Kelsey Grammer and Carrie Elwes, and um, it is fantastic. Um, it's it's one of the best government movies that I've ever seen. Like it's just. Uh, I, I I the reason I I specifically point to these three films is I is that in each one it kind of covers uh kind of an aspect of what we all know is the truth that uh, media and 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 the government are kind of more of a, a like a, a chocolate peanut butter cookie than they are two separate yeah. entities. There's very blurred lines. There's a lot of a lot of money spent on deceiving a lot of people. And that's why Trump is doing so successful is because he's not necessarily getting the most well-informed, nuanced political thinkers out there. He's getting the masses of people appealing to them at kind of a base level of, you know, chest beating, uh, rah, rah, rah. And then that, that appeals to a lot of people because they just see strength and they see confidence. And they don't, they don't, you're not really necessarily thinking about things rationally. And that kind of – if you – you just got to watch these movies. So uh, – Maybe yeah. uh, people should uh, check them out. You should not bit torrent them off of the Pirate Bay using a program like uTorrent because that would be wrong. Uh, and right. you would rob Especially the not without of the royalties. being behind a uh, you know a VPN. Um, Zach, running pure block specifically. Zach, <laughs> thank you so much the movie, for the call. The movie is called The Pentagon Wars, the one that I was referring to, and it's similar to the ones that you've brought up. Uh, I don't, I can't speak for uh, Robertson, but I can speak for it. It's, it's a little bit similar to uh, Wag the Dog and Bullworth. And then another political movie that Kelsey Grammer was in, Swing Vote, that if you watch it, Along with, uh, there was another uh, Man of the Year that had Robin Williams. There are a lot of, shall we say, inaccuracies with the way they portray the American electoral system and yeah. how people are able to run for president. And I don't have enough time to tell you all the things that are wrong with those two movies, but we continue with your calls and your thoughts. 
Nick calling in from Philly wants to talk about charity. Nick, what's on your mind? Hi, guys. I was wondering what you guys thought of some of these major name charities that only actually put out about 1%. Well, sorry, not 1%, but one digit percentage of what they actually take in. I think that charities that wind up spending most of their money on overhead are, fraud. I, quite frankly, I, I will say they're frauds because they're not giving the money to the things that they're saying the money is going to, and that is fraud. So if I were yeah. to say that I'm raising money to build a mansion on Mars and you're all invited – and I wind up spending the money on things that will neither get me to Mars nor build a mansion on Mars, I'm committing fraud. I mean, you would think that with these charities that the least, at least 51% of the money, at least, would be going to actually what people are intending this money to go towards. But they don't even do that. Not even close. You know, they don't, they don't uh, you know... Even even approach sending a majority of the money to the causes that people are trying to donate for. They take most of it. Yeah, so what are your thoughts, Nick? Yeah, it, to me, it really reeks of money laundering. But um, I had one more question. So Certainly. during the uh, Haiti earthquake that happened, mm -hmm. um, I think it was George W. Bush. I'm not exactly sure. It might have been some other politician. But... Uh, they were saying on TV to not donate blankets and other goods directly to the Haitians, but to instead give the money to like an organization like Red Cross. Right. And uh, I was just wondering what you thought of that. And then Red Cross ran off with the money and gave like nothing. That's what it seems like to me too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and there there actually are private charities. Nick, thank you for the call. There are private charities, and there's one that's based here in New Hampshire where they're sending stuff to the Syrians. Like, they're actually sending clothing to people in Syria that have had to leave their homes because of the war that's been going on for several years now. And you're not really hearing a lot about this charity because everything they get is going out. And they even have some Amazon wish list to where you can buy the stuff and it winds up getting shipped somehow, I believe, to some contact over in Syria. And I, I think that's a lot better than one of these centralized organizations. Uh, you had mentioned Red Cross to where, you know, like they have some bureaucracy somewhere set up. And I, I would dare say that some of these charities are as inefficient as government agencies. Yeah. And when, when I say that, because most people probably don't realize how inefficient government agencies are, but somewhere between like 65 to 75 percent of funds that go through the welfare program in the United States winds up going on overhead and salaries to middle class people that then oversee handing out small amounts of money to people that actually need help. So Johnson, uh, Tell us a little bit more about this Cards Against Humanity thing. Sure. And then we'll definitely jump in a little deeper into Cards Against Humanity in the third hour. So uh, each year, the Irreverent, I'm going to just rehash a little bit here. The, each year, the Irreverent Kickstarter-funded card game offers a holiday special card pack of sorts. This year, it was the Hanukkah-themed Eight Sensible Gifts uh Sorry, one <laughs> reacted here. Eight sensible gifts consisting of eight individual presents mailed out over the course of eight night the eight night Jewish holiday. Last year, the Cards Against Humanity team gave away one square foot of a private island in Maine to the two hundred fifty thousand participants of the ten days or whatever of Kwanzaa. This is their, how they ten titled. days or whatever. Okay, of Kwanzaa. They they titled it that specifically. Like we said, they're irreverent. Um, for Hanukkah, Cards Against Humanity's first three gifts were all pairs of socks. Then came a membership to WEBC, Chicago's NPR station, and a one-week paid vacation for workers at Cards Against Humanity's Chinese printing partner. But the seventh gift is when things do get interesting, and we'll cover that one. You'll tell us about that yeah. in the third hour, and we'll take your calls 855-450-FREE on the Christmas Eve edition.
Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web Curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free. Visit webcurfew.com. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, December 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.31 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,073 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $456. And how War.com reports, though the Iraqi military secured no gains in Wednesday's fighting in Ramadi, they bragged about a huge death toll among the Islamic State fighters, claiming hundreds of fighters from the Islamic State were killed since Tuesday and the city would be totally retaken in a matter of days. The death toll is noteworthy because they'd only estimated a couple of hundred the Islamic State fighters left in the entire city on Monday, and despite claiming once again to have killed at least that many, there seemed to be more than a few remaining. Iraqi officials first moved into Ramadi earlier this month and have been predicting victory in a matter of days ever since. The hope is to have it done by year's end. The Islamic State has held the city since May and still holds key central portions, including provincial capital buildings. A large number of civilians are still believed to be trapped in the city, though dozens were reported to have escaped into government-held areas as fighting raged into the afternoon on Wednesday. The city initially had around half a million residents, but the on-again, off-again fighting there, as with much of Iraq, has left many displaced. In 1999, Daryl W. Perry began a search for traditional values, which led him down a path to the ideas of liberty. He tells the story in A Rebel's Journey, My Path to Liberty. Of the book, Dr. Brian Sovereign says, Sometimes it's funny, and sometimes I think it's crazy, but it's always authentic. Find A Rebel's Journey, My Path to Liberty by Daryl W. Perry on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, ask for A Rebel's Journey wherever books are sold, or visit arebelsjourney.com. UPI reports Virginia will stop honoring most out-of-state concealed carry permits, a move to tighten gun control laws without involving the legislature. State Attorney General Mark R. Herring announced the plan Tuesday. Virginia will no longer honor the permits from 25 states with which it currently has a reciprocity agreement. Herring said, while you are here in Virginia, you are subject to the Commonwealth's gun laws. He added that the 25 states have relatively lax gun laws compared to those in Virginia. The state's new policy 
which goes into effect in February, is one which a number of state governors are adopting to address gun violence without expecting Republican-controlled legislatures to change gun laws. Although visitors to Virginia can still obtain non-resident permits to carry concealed handguns if they meet the state standards, Chris Cox of the National Rifle Association's Institute for Legislative Action said, This decision is both dangerous and shameful. At a time when people are scared and desperately need the ability to defend themselves, Herring has chosen the path of making self-defense harder. Agreements with West Virginia, Michigan, Oklahoma, Texas, and Utah will remain in place. For nearly 40 years, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage has been a trusted source for buying and selling precious metals like gold and silver. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and have permanently removed the minimum purchase amount for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on buying and selling precious metals and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 800-874-9760 or visit online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Texas Health Department is cutting off federal funding to a Houston Planned Parenthood affiliate for a nearly three-decade-old HIV prevention program, according to officials. Chris Van Dusen, the spokesman for the Texas Department of State Health Services, said, We have the discretion to extend the contract and elected not to. The service will be provided by local health departments in the area. Van Dusen did not elaborate. The contract is federally funded through the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, but managed by the state. In a letter sent to Planned Parenthood Gulf Coast on Monday, state officials said the $600,000 annual grant set to expire December 31st will be cut off indefinitely. The program, which launched in 1988, has administered more than 138,000 HIV tests and identified 1,182 people with the virus. It also tests for syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and hepatitis C. The Houston area Planned Parenthood affiliate said in a statement, it's cruel to play games with people's health care, noting that the move was politically motivated. A CDC spokeswoman said the agency does not provide money directly to Planned Parenthood and that the state is within its right to reallocate the money. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Like most married couples, Dale and Barbara Patterson like to shake things up from time to time. The couple of 12 years says they've been able to keep their relationship spontaneous and interesting by bickering in all sorts of different positions and even different rooms. There was a while there when our petty nitpicking got pretty predictable. Dale would finish harping on some stupid bullshit first, and before I had time to get a word in, he would just let out a groan, roll over, and fall asleep. Now he really takes his time ripping me a new one over every little thing. Yeah, we'll just pounce on each other the second we get home from work in the evening. <laughs> and then just go right back at it in the morning. I mean, sometimes we'll look at each other directly in the eyes when we're having an argument. And other times she turns her back on me and I just scream at her from behind. We're not exactly shy about doing it in public anymore. Dale gets pretty worked up when there are people around who could be watching or listening. I still can't believe you it's forgot. Not now. Oh, come on. I said not now. Oh, what? don't even. Don't even what? I asked. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Kicking off our number three of the live 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 christmas eve edition of free talk live in studio it's daryl and johnson who else is doing live radio on christmas eve not a lot of people as i was traveling earlier in the day it wasn't very far that i was traveling but like you know to the gas station and to the gym and then here i was listening to the radio and everything was replays and they even said that it was replays you know he'll be doing even fewer uh uh radio shows is people doing radio shows on christmas but guess what free talk live will be here that's right and you can be live with us you can call in 855 450 free or if you have the skype then you can use the skype the username is lrn.fm just send a contact request if you have not already done so that will get approved when i get the chance to click over on that button and you will generally sound a lot better as long as you have a fairly decent internet connection. And Johnson, we were talking about the newest Cards Against Humanity sort of stunt, right. if you will. 
And they've done several of these. Uh, last year, you said they gave away one square foot, foot of, of island, land right? on an island off In the Maine. coast of Maine. Mm -hmm. For Black Friday earlier this year, they sold nothing for $5 and apparently sold $70,000 worth of nothing. Right. And now they want to do something with Picasso. That's correct. And they, I mean, they have been giving away a bunch of different gifts for this, uh, this thing this year, which is for Hanukkah. So they're doing like Hanukkah things. So the first three gifts, you know, for Hanukkah were pairs of socks. Then they gave a membership to WBZ, Chicago's NPR station. And then they gave away a one week paid vacation for wor th their workers at Cards Against Humanity's uh, Chinese printing partner. Okay. So th this sounds sort of like, you know, it's we like we thing. have made a donation in your name too, right? And now the people in China wind up getting a week off. But so now they, they these people who have invested deserve payback, obviously, right? So the seventh gift is where things get interesting. So the question is, donate it to a museum or cut into one hundred and fifty thousand tiny squares. Yes. The Cards Against Humanity crew used some of the two point two five million dollars in revenue it made from the Hanukkah product to buy Tete de Fon. The head, or translated, the head of a fawn, uh, the original uh, 1962 Picasso painting. Cards Against Humanity is offering its customers a chance to vote on what should happen to the painting. Donate it to the Art Institute of Chicago or laser cut it into 150,000 tiny feet squares and send everyone their own scrap of a real Picasso. A little sleuthing shows that the Picasso in question may be this signed print, purchased for 14,000 Swiss francs, about $14,100, from the Swiss auction house Kohler this past June. The Cards Against Humanity website includes this video of what appears to be the Picasso print being laser scanned. Voting begins on the day after Christmas and runs through the end of the year, and you must have purchased the eight sensible gifts to participate. Cards Against Humanity founder Max Temkin refused to share any additional information about the Picasso until after the votes are in. We would say, we know you'll do the right thing, Internet, but knowing the Cards Against Humanity target audience, we're not sure what to expect. I think I know what to expect. And it's right, not gonna and be, it's going to be a sliced and diced Picasso. <laughs> so the, the Cards Against Humanity audience, for those who missed sort of the description of Cards Against Humanity in the last hour, uh, people that aren't necessarily uh, willing Here, to save a let's Picasso. just break it down for you. I own it. <laughs> I own Cards Against Humanity as well as Libertarians Against Humanity. So there you go. And I have one of the expansion packs uh, that I, I believe it's called Citizens Against Hypocrisy that was put out as a fundraiser by the Libertarian Party of Alabama. Yeah. And <laughs> I gotta they, they, they have... I don't know. Does this make me a terrible person? Because I absolutely would not vote to donate that painting to the Art Institute of Chicago. I would absolutely 100% vote for laser dicing it up and sending it to people who participate. And I didn't even participate. I'm not even talking about wanting a piece of this painting. I'm just saying, like, I'd like to see people get a piece of the painting just because I'd like to see the painting chopped up and sent to everyone who donated. Right, and I don't know. I, I'm sort of torn on this because on the one hand, you know, I do like the idea of having art on display but at the same time, I like performance art. Right. And I see what Cards Against Humanity is doing here basically as performance art. Right. I really don't think that they will cut it up, but I'm sure that they could. I mean, I don't know. I, it's it's a possibility, but even if the vote were to go for this, I just can't see them doing that. I don't know. I, I Is there a threshold to where it has to get a super majority before they wind up cutting this up? I think they're just counting over the votes that they receive. Okay, so just simple majority. Right. Yeah, I, I really don't know. It will be interesting to see what happens, but no matter what, it's all, you know, they they own the painting. They bought it. Right. They are the legitimate owners of this painting, so it's not like they're doing something that would violate private property, unlike what some Grinch did in Centennial, Colorado, who... 
he is a very naughty boy. Apparently around 2 o'clock today. I'm expecting this to be a baby Jesus stolen story. We do, we do no, every it's year. not a stolen baby Jesus. <laughs> it's worse. Somebody stole a Salvation Army bell ringers collection bin outside of the King Super in Centennial, Colorado. It happened around 2 p.m., where the bell ringer says he was devastated and believes that it was not something spontaneous, but something that the guy planned on. He said the suspect was a juvenile, was talking with customers when he ran up behind the bell ringer, grabbed the kettle. It was not chained as kettles generally are and how the one at this location has been in the past. The guy then jumped into a car and though several people tried to chase him, he got away. The bell ringer has been participating for 15 years and says he believes there were somewhere between $800 and $1,000 in his kettle when it was stolen. And I I know I've seen stories like this. It seems like almost a yearly occurrence. Somebody somewhere decides, I'm going to go steal one of these red kettles from the Salvation Army guy. And I'm sorry, but if you do that, then you're scum. Yeah, or I, I Actually, to quote my... I think if you're stealing anything, you're probably scum. <laughs> to, to quote my high school football coach, guys, if you're going to steal from a teammate, you're worse than a paramecium. <laughs> Who here knows what a paramecium is? Johnson, do you know what a paramecium is? Uh, a a single-celled organism. A paramecium is what eats well crap. <laughs> and if you're going to steal from one of your teammates... You're worse than something that eats well crap. That means you're worse than well crap. <laughs> so don't steal. So if you're going to steal money from the Salvation Army or any charity for that matter, even if it is one of these charities that winds up putting most of the money in overhead, if you're stealing money, then you're worse than what eats well crap. And I never thought that I would be quoting my high school football coach on the radio <laughs> 20 some odd years after playing football. But yeah, you're, you're worse than a paramecium if yeah. you do this. Yes. What do you think of people who steal baby Jesus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because apparently ste- this is happening. Stealing is wrong. In Greenfield, Massachusetts and Madison, Wisconsin this season. As so far, there have been uh, two uh, major Je- baby Jesus theft stories. I decided to Google it and see how many results came up. Yeah, and it seems as though those are sort of, you know, the cool things for kids to do these days, right? Stealing a baby Jesus. And they tend to get returned. A- it's like a it's like a boomerang baby Jesus. Like they tend to get stolen and then returned. I don't know if like there's a moment of conscience or if, you know, of uh, God hey, reaches out and touches I them and <laughs> just stole the baby Jesus. Like I, I, I shouldn't be stealing baby Jesus. Yeah, so maybe, you know, the person out there in Centennial, Colorado that stole the kettle from the Salvation Army will have that come to Jesus moment and decide to return the money, but I'm not going to hold my breath on it. Right. And speaking of holding one's breath, there's apparently some major protest in Chicago that we'll tell you about. And your call is 855-450-FREE. Bloated belly? Gas? Acid reflux? You could have pounds of rotting, rancid, toxic gunk clogging up your gut right now. And with all the processed food we're exposed to today, it's no wonder why. Fortunately, there's New Biotics, our first ever gunk buster for cleansing that toxic gunk out of your body. And right now, we're giving away a free trial to anyone who calls the following toll-free number, 1-800-983-2573. Strict limit of one free trial per household. With pounds of toxic gunk clogging up your gut, it's no wonder you don't feel good. Made with natural ingredients, New Biotics is our first ever gunk buster scientifically designed to unclog your gut and cleanse that gunk from your body, flattening your belly and combating periodic bloating, excess gas, heartburn, and acid reflux. But hurry, call now for your free trial of New Biotics while we're still giving it away for free. 1-800-983-2573. Call now for details. 1-800-983-2573. That's 1-800-983-2573. This is a healthcare alert from the Pain Relief Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You don't have to suffer any longer. 
you can immediately qualify for a pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you by calling our 24-7 pain relief hotline at 866-389-0620. Delivery is free and all paperwork is handled for you. If you are on Medicare and have knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain, don't wait. You can qualify to immediately receive a pain relieving brace at little or no cost by calling our 24-7 pain hotline now at 866-389-0620. Our representatives are standing by 24-7 to take your call and rush you your pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and all paperwork is handled for you. Just call 866-389-0620. That's 866-389-0620. Again, 866-389-0620. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963, 800-301-2963, 800-301-2963, 800-301-2963. LRN. FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for lrn.fm in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to lrn.fm. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Silver and gold, silver and gold, how do you measure its worth? Just by the pleasure it gives here on earth. Roberts and Roberts Brokerage hopes you have a happy holiday season and a prosperous 2016. We're available 24-7 at rrbi.co or call 800-874-9760. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Christmas Eve edition. And yes, you can take part of the show Give us a call, 855-450-FREE. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Johnson. And want to make sure that we tell you about the New Hampshire Liberty Forum coming up February 18th through the 21st, less than two months away. It happens in the Radisson Hotel in Manchester, New Hampshire. And Johnson, did you hear who's going to be there? I did. Did you hear who's going to, well, kind well, of actually be, be there, there. <laughs> virtually? Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden is confirmed for the New Hampshire Liberty Forum. He will be connecting via relay video something to the New Hampshire Liberty Forum. Unfortunately, it's only going to be a half hour speech with Q&A session that he does. But it will be something that you will not want to miss. There are other speakers that have been announced. There are more speakers that are yet to be announced. But again, this is coming up in less than two months. So you definitely want to get your tickets now while they are, I believe, discounted. You can go to nhlibertyforum.com to find all the other speakers that are going to be there and buy your tickets. Again, nhlibertyforum.com. So, Johnson, I, I think you were here when we talked about these protests that happened in Chicago on Thanksgiving. I don't know. And maybe. more protests are happening now. 
where there, there was the video that came out about a month ago of the police officer shooting 17-year-old Laquan McDonald 16 times in 15 seconds while McDonald had his back turned to police and presumably walking away. Right. Well, demonstrators are attempting to shut down Chicago's Magnificent Mile, which is a, a large shopping area in downtown Chicago. The story from CNN says that demonstrators shut down the city's so-called Magnificent Mile and entrances to several stores on Thursday, disrupting last-minute shopping and demanding the resignations of the mayor and prosecutor. And they've got a video, and I watched the video, and apparently... The protest, while smaller than previous protest, seemed to be several different protests happening almost simultaneously to where you've got one group of people that's basically marching down the street and you've got other people that are marching and then stopping in front of different stores to try to block the entrance to the stores for a few minutes and they're shouting through bullhorns or just shouting... Uh, in unison, 16 shots and a cover-up, and then they'll walk a little further, and the reporter said that sometimes people will just join in and walk with the protesters for about a block and then you know leave the protest. Right. So it's one of these things to where you know it's sort of this sporadic sort of thing that— It's kind of what protests have kind of become, like since Occupy. It's just a mess. Right. Pe- people sort of join and then drop out during the midst of the protest, but this protest is being called Black Christmas Matters. We're here. We're here. We don't know why. We're well, here. We're here. In Chicago, they know why. They want <laughs> the mayor and the police chief to resign. And well, they got the police chief to resign. Now they're wanting the prosecutor to resign as well because, well, the prosecutor's not done anything to bring about justice. The story from CNN continues. It says the Christmas Eve day protest was the second major demonstration since Thanksgiving weekend on Michigan Avenue, where about 200 activists on Thursday condemned how local officials took more than a year to release the video showing a police officer firing 16 shots in 15 seconds towards Laquan McDonald, who was killed. And this is a pet peeve of my just to sort of pause here for a moment. Did you notice anything about the way that sentence was worded to where it basically alleviated the responsibility? It says 16 shots were fired at the teenager who was killed. Right. Not the police officer shot the 17 year old 16 times killing him. So it's this weird sort of thing. and there, there I'm was surprised actually... they didn't just actually blame the gun in the article. The gun fired 16 shots at the kid. They're like, why don't they just say that the gun did it? Because that's basically what they do in the media anyway, right? No, they, they do that in the media when it's somebody that's not a police officer. So here they're basically you know, alleviating the police officer of responsibility. Of no, when it's not a police they, officer, they, they they'll were... blame it and they'll say that the person's a terroristic or they're a psychopath. They'll blame the person. What I'm saying is here they're deferring responsibility so there's no nothing is responsible. I'm surprised when there's nothing responsible that they don't just you know put it on the gun. Well, hmm. Chicago already has strict gun control and the only people that legally own firearms in Chicago are the police. And yet the guns are still killing people. Those crazy guns. The protesters chanted 16 shots and a cover up outside the Apple store and the water tower palace or the water tower place mall blocking shoppers from entering, but allowing patrons to exit. At one point there was a short scuffle on a crowded sidewalk between protesters and police officers They don't specify who started the scuffle, and since they did not specify, one can surmise that it was probably the police that started the scuffle. Protesters said Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel and Cook County State Attorney Anita Alvarez must resign. They have thus far declined those demands. Rahm Emanuel, however, this month fired the Chicago police superintendent. So the uh, police superintendent was fired. He did not resign, but the protesters did get one of the things they were wanting. 
Gary McCarthy was that superintendent who was fired, who days earlier rejected protesters' demands for his resignation and declared, quote, What I will tell you is that the mayor has made it very clear that he has my back. And then a couple (laughs) days later, he got fired. On Thursday, protesters said they wanted more resignations. In addition to chanting 16 shots and to cover up, they chanted one down, two to go. The demonstration on Thursday was significantly smaller than the hundreds of protesters who shut down Michigan Avenue the day after Thanksgiving. What has enraged many leaders, pastors, and members of Chicago's black community was a police dash cam video showing McDonald being shot on a city street last year by Officer Jason Van Dyke, who last month was charged with first-degree murder. Even President Obama said he was deeply disturbed by the footage. And there's more here to the article. For more than three hours on Thursday... Demonstrators drew a diverse crowd, including one placard in Spanish that said Fuera Rom, translated to mean Rom out. But at one point, the protesters broke into two groups traveling in different directions on Chicago's famous corridors. Some shoppers even joined the marching protesters for a block or two, eventually returning to shopping. Along the way, protesters also chanted, No justice, no profit, prosecute Emmanuel, and no justice, no peace, no racist police. So what are your thoughts? Do these protests work? Will they work? Will they send the message that they're trying to send? 855-450 free. Or you can call in on Skype, username lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey system. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. 
please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. When you amp Free Talk Live, you get perks like access to the AMP-only Facebook group and AMP podcast. Visit amp.freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Christmas Eve edition of the show. In studio tonight is Daryl and Johnson. And we're talking about, right now, we're talking about the Black Christmas Matters protests that are taking place in Chicago. But we've been all over the board tonight from the war on Christmas in Somalia. Uh, that charity, uh, according to some researchers, charities may need your money more than they need your time. The average American adult lives just 18 miles from their mother. Uh, Cards Against Humanity might want to destroy a Picasso. The presidential election seems like some bad movies. And now the Black Christmas Matters protest. And of course, your thoughts are welcome. 855-450-FREE or via Skype, LRN.FM. You just made me remember that I I had something I wanted to say to that the one... Caller was talking about the presidential elections being kind of like movies and how ridiculous the presidential elections are. Right, so there is are. Wag the Dog, yeah. uh, Bull Winkle. Bullworth. <laughs> and I, I'm never going to remember the name of that and movie. Bob Robertson. And then I uh, own Bullworth, Bob Robertson. So if you want to watch it sometime, I can lend it to you. Um, I, the, uh, you know, with uh, John McAfee getting in, you know, if he's like talking about getting in and running as a libertarian presidential candidate. Yeah, apparently uh, he made that announcement earlier today that he would be seeking the Libertarian Party's nomination instead of spending money to wind up getting ballot access as the Cyber Party, yep. which he founded earlier in as the year. As silly as it is, he is the only candidate who is more ridiculous and that and in a way that is very perfect for at least me loving to see him. I would love to see him debate Trump. Oh, would that be a beautiful thing? Just watching crazy Trump and crazy John McAfee going at it and seeing who can top the crazy. It would be unbelievable. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would want to see that. <laughs> I don't know. May, maybe I would. Maybe it would be like, you know, watching a train wreck. Yes, absolutely. To where it's like, I really shouldn't be seeing this but i can't look away and then bernie i'd love to just see a three-way debate between bernie sanders trump and john mcafee what a whirlwind they're not gonna let a minor party candidate on the stage with a republican (laughs) and a democrat that'll never happen (laughs) well bernie sanders isn't really a democrat right (laughs) he's running for the democratic nomination i know know. i'm just saying he's not he's calling himself a democrat now (laughs) Now, let's get back into the story here from CNN about the Black Christmas Matters protest. Some of the protesters in Chicago earlier today included activists from the civil rights movement from Black Lives Matters. And one small group in the march had a masked man calling for a revolution against black genocide. And these protesters or Similar protesters were out on Wednesday as well, not just in Chicago, but also in Minneapolis and San Francisco. 
and they were dispersed by police after assembling inside the Mall of America, at least those that gathered in Minneapolis. Five people in Minneapolis were arrested at the Mall of America, and eight more were arrested at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. In California, nine women were arrested for briefly shutting down an exit ramp on U.S. Highway 101 to San Francisco International Airport, (sighs) according to the California Highway Patrol. I imagine the traffic caused by that was horrendous. So what do you think about some of the tactics that they're using here of blocking off entrances to private businesses, sitting on the freeway and blocking traffic? They're just inconveniencing from completely unrelated people, I mean, generally. Right, and the way I look at it, the sitting on the, you know, interstate, that's one of those things because, you know, the interstate isn't private property. Right. So the claim is everybody owns it. So if everybody owns it, should they have the right to use it? And, you know, what what about uh, performance art, et cetera? But the blocking entrances to private businesses, that's definitely a violation of private property. And I do think that the property owners would have a legitimate claim against the people for, hey, you're preventing me from doing business here. I don't know. And the everybody owns it argument is kind of a silly one in a weird way because if it every, is. if everyone owns it, then, you know, everyone has a right to vote on how it's used and, you know, like, oh, then we're voting and, you know, then you choose right, but, a leader and that they decide that the rules are that that's a highway and it's for cars. Right. But, you know, <laughs> that's the claim. It's public property. Everybody owns it. So everybody gets to use it. Well, not if everybody voted and made made the decision that, you know, that's for cars. I didn't vote on that. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, again, it's the weird sort of thing of, you know, do you have the right to free speech in public? I don't think anybody would say that you don't, but what defines public? Right. You know, is a sidewalk outside of a business public or is that private property? You know, who actually owns the sidewalk? Because the business owner in a lot of cases they are responsible for the section of sidewalk in front of their business. Well, that's the thing about liberals and Democrats is they think that everything is decided democratically, including what happens to things that you pay for and what happens to your money. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's not just, you know, quote unquote liberals. Conservatives want to do well, the same yeah, thing. That's true, too. Yeah. They, they just they just want to do it with your body and your personal life. Right. They, they just want to draw <laughs> the line differently. They want to change how you have to behave when you're, you know, doing other things. Yeah. So, you know, it, and when, when I often talk about voting with people and they say, well, you know, uh, the rights of the minority are protected. And I said that's completely contrary to democracy. Democracy is the plurality expressing an opinion on a certain day and everybody must abide by that decision and it's also democrats that have been responsible for the worst like most racist laws in history for the most part right but i'm not even talking about i know you're not sort of scream but the the question that i ask and people always want to say well no i i would never support that if there was you know something that said everybody's house must be painted the same color and well we put it up to a vote, and everybody's house must be white. You can't have any other color than white. You you can have a shade of white, so eggshell is okay. Uh, <laughs> cappuccino froth is okay because that's a shade of white. But you can't have anything that is outside of the white spectrum of colors. But we voted on it. <laughs> so would would you say that that's violating your rights? And most people would say, yeah, it definitely is. Okay, well, what about when they voted and you now have to give us more money? Well, that's not theft because it's a tax and we, we <laughs> voted. I, I I don't like the way the vote went, but we voted. So that that's okay. Okay, so what's the difference between them stealing your money and telling you what color your house can be? And the people are, well, one's uh, telling me what I can do with my stuff and the other one's a tax because taxes are the price you pay for living in society. Clearly, clearly, Daryl, if you don't like it, you can leave. That's the difference is that you're free to leave. Except you're not free to leave. (laughs) 
You can try to leave, and then they it's, claim... It's not theft because you're free to leave. They, they claim that you have to pay like $3,200 to renounce your citizenship, and you have to you know present your documents to some U.S. consulate in a foreign country. And in order to get to the foreign country, you have to have these documents that... If you owe not taxes you, on, you're you not own going this to be house. able to get anymore. You own this. You didn't. You skipped over the whole part where you own this house that you know they're forcing you to paint a certain color. You know, so you'd have right. to go through the process of like selling it and moving and being forced to do all this ridiculous amount of stuff. Oh, and now you're just you moving to avoid the taxes. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can't move to avoid taxes. But wait a second. Thirty seconds ago, you told me if I don't like it, leave. Right. So which one is it? Should I leave? Or should I stay here and have my money stolen and my property rights violated and every other right that I have gets violated <laughs> at the whim of some group of people? What are your thoughts? 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live and LRN.FM on Skype. You can control your health care with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is like minded people coming together to share medical costs, which saves money. You don't even have to pay for procedures that violate your conscience. Because we all share the same values. Join the movement of people who share in medical costs and change the way you pay for your health care forever. Go to libertyhealthshare.org to find out more. Liberty Health Share. Together, we're changing health care for good. LibertyHealthShare.org. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Concerned about harmful contaminants in your water? Look to ProPure, the most trusted name in gravity water filtration systems. ProPure, with the silver-infused Pro1 G2.0 filter, removes over 200 contaminants, including VOCs, heavy metals, chloramines, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, fluorides, and radiologicals. We don't just say it, we back it up. The Pro1 G2.0 filter is NSF 42 certified and independently tested to meet NSF 53 and P231 standards. Pro Pure Water, the way nature meant it to be. Clean, crisp, and refreshing. Purchase with confidence in quality, performance, and customer service. Take advantage of our biggest holiday 25% off sale going on now. Visit your authorized Pro Pure dealer or ProPureUSA.com. That's P R O P U R U S A.com. Or call 800 544 3533. 800 544 3533. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. I know this sounds unbelievable, but at my house, we saved as much as 45% off of a new item on Amazon. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? 
If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state, or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. We might have time to get your call if you make that call right now. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. We've been all over the map tonight talking about Christmas and Black Christmas Matters, Cards Against Humanity, Charity, and various other things in studio tonight on Christmas Eve. It's Daryl and Johnson. And we'll jump into your calls here in just a second. But first, need to make sure that I tell you about Text Fire because most text messaging marketing services are cumbersome to use. They require lots of manual entry to add and remove subscribers. But with Text Fire, your customers can subscribe or unsubscribe to your text messages. By simply texting a keyword of your choosing to your number. You can send out text messages without having to log into a web-based admin system. Send your text messages using real local numbers. You can also have unlimited subscriber lists and use different lists for different types of customers or even staff. It's easy to communicate with different groups with TextFire. Customers can send text back to you, allowing you to get orders via text if you want, use the web interface to create lists, manage subscribers, and schedule text messages. Text Fire is great for groups of 100 or even up to 2,000 people, making it great for churches or other local civic groups. Text messages for ministries enhance church communication and youth communication like never before. You can send inspirational messages, prayer chains, event reminders, donation requests, cancellation notifications, or pretty much anything else that you can think of. Learn more by going to TextFire. That's T-X-T-F-Y-R-E dot com. TextFire dot com. And Free Talk Live listeners, get your first month free by texting FTL. That's FTL as in Free Talk Live. Text that to 877-792-7418 or just call 877-792-7418 and mention that you heard about text fire on Free Talk Live. Going now to Lisa in Mississippi wants to talk about Jesus. Lisa, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? You, uh, you're going to need to just adjust your position or maybe your hands over yeah, the microphone and your phone, but it sounds like you're underwater and in one of those red solo cups. So something's really wrong with yeah, your phone. Yeah, I've got her turned all the way up here on the board. So Lisa, can you speak a little louder and say that again, please? Yeah, I don't know if Jesus was black or not. That's what I heard. I heard that he was black because I think I caught part of that. Unfortunately, Lisa, you were having phone issues. She you know said where I've heard, that, heard... T- that sound of a phone call before? You know when you like actually do the thing when you're like a little kid and you actually tie the string and the two cups together? And you like try and talk to one another through the cups. You make like the cup phone. That wasn't as bad as the string in the cup, but that was pretty bad. It was pretty pretty close. She said that she heard that that Jesus Jesus was black black because some of the Jews may have been black. I I don't know. I think that she's saying that because of the way you've been saying this, like Black Christmas Matters. It's like Black Christmas Lives Matter or something like you've been saying it that way. Right. Well, the, the protests that are happening in Chicago. Right. Because they're happening around Christmas, and it's the Black Lives Matters protest. Right. They're calling it, they, the the protesters right. are calling it Black Christmas Matters. Well, and to me, if you have a Black Christmas, it would seem to naturally kind of indicate Black Jesus. Black Jesus would celebrate Black Christmas. I don't know. Uh, we now go to Doug listening on, or listening via TuneIn from Illinois. Doug, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? 
Yeah, pretty much I want to talk real quick, too, about uh, the issue of liberty. I think that when you're talking about a democratic form of government, which can be why you've had people on the far left try to push that, that we're nothing more really than mob rule. You know, if you have a democratic form of government, that can be fine. An important point here can be, though, that we have a republic. And within that republic, we have a founding document guaranteeing liberty to everybody. Now, liberty can be an important point. Liberty can be your freedom to do whatever you want to do until you have a direct impact upon another human being, which can be why you can't commit murder and you can't go out and you can't rob a bank. You're, you're, you're having an impact on another individual and their liberty. Now, you have people like Tom Hartman. I don't know if you ever heard of him on the radio. I have. He has been on Air America. I hate that guy. I really <laughs> wish I, – I think that the guy got fired. I hope he landed up in an alley. Uh, having to go through a garbage can looking for food and trying to fight off a rat to get the food. I really hate that guy. So, the fact that he, what he will do, what he will do, will he, he will be try, try to make a deranged argument on the issue of liberty. Nobody can do anything without having another impact on another human being. The definition really of what oh, liberty yeah. can be. Can be the we're it, all connected can argument. Hit. Right. Yeah, I've heard this. Right. So, right. Doug, let, let me it's ask the, you this question. What is the actual difference between republic and democracy? Well, in a republic, you elect people. Um, in a full, out, blown out democratic government, you you vote on every issue, meaning that you're pretty much you're pretty much like a referendum on everything that they do. Right, but there, there's um, no both, country both. in the world that is a full democracy. Every country right. has some form of representation. So to say that we're a republic, and so therefore liberty, it seems to be like one of these, no. you know, you, you want to hold on to a word and claim that the word means something other I don't than know. what it actually means. I knew a true but, nut, but, I knew a true nut who was like trying actual, to move to Switzerland because of direct democracy or something like that, but yeah. Right, but, but when you have a founding document guaranteeing you liberty, that can be an important point of it. If you only have okay, the when, when has I would the agree when with you. has the U.S. Constitution ever prevented the U.S. Congress from doing anything to violate your rights? I agree with you. I completely agree with you. Make me the problem, but I would I would argue that the judicial branch can be the much larger issue. They vote and they attack liberty left and right continually all the way up from the local level, all the way up to the federal level. And they're doing it all the time. Every year you have go by, they diminish liberty a little bit. Yeah, and the no. legislative branch and executive branch, they diminish liberty as well. Doug, thank you for the call. We now go to Andy in Texas, also listening via TuneIn, wants to talk about taxes. Andy, you're on Free Talk Live on Christmas Eve. What's on your mind? Hey, how are you fellas doing? We're doing All good. Right. We're doing a radio show. Is it appropriate? Can I say Merry Christmas? You can say Merry Christmas. You can say Happy Kwanzaa. You can say Merry Festivus. Well, all of it to you guys. And Festivus, I like that one. That's a Seinfeld thing. Yes. I like that. Hey, uh, no. Uh, I, as far as the taxes go, uh, uh, I, I just felt to see. I, I would really like to ask both you guys. What do you think of these taxes? I mean, how about the person who's 65 years old and still paying $3,700 a year in property taxes, and that money's supposed to go to schools for our kids? How come that person who has no more kids has to pay that property taxes to keep the, uh, to keep the schools open? Or, or, or as far as the income tax goes, there's, there's nothing that says we have to pay income tax. There's no, there's no amendment. There's, there's nothing. And and yet we just do this blindly as though as if uh, uh, there's some sort of law that says we have to do this. There's so many things we do blindly that the government tells us are laws and this is the way you have to do it. And we have to we do, we just have to follow this stuff. And yet none of it is backed up by law or anything. And these these incredible. Well, it's uh, backed up by something. It's backed up by men and women rhetoric. that will come throw you in jail if you don't do what somebody exactly. claims that you're supposed to do. So it's backed exactly. up by force or threats of force. And that's what makes it really no different than a mugger. If you're walking exactly. through downtown right. Dallas or Houston or wherever, and some guy jumps out from behind a bush and says, give me all your money or bad things will happen. 
Exactly. Really, that's no different than if you don't pay a tax that some government agent somewhere says that you owe. If you refuse to pay, some guy or some group of guys with guns and handcuffs and possibly ballistic engineered armored response counterattack trucks will show up at your house or wherever you happen to be when they find you and they will say, give us the money or bad things will happen. But the terrible thing about that is, is that they do this against, there's nothing that gives them the backing to do it. These people are, 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 are they're, 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 they're compartmentalized. And, and, and so they're told to do this stuff to you. And, and yet they have no idea. And, and these people who are compartmentalized to do this, they swore an oath to the uphold, protect, and defend the Constitution. And yet they still go and do this shit to you. Oh, can't That's say yeah, can't that. Say that. Can't say that. Uh, Andy, thank you for the call. And Lisa, unfortunately, we are out of time I have for a... you for tonight. Before but we completely call back sign off. Tomorrow, we will be live at 7 o'clock Christmas night. Before we completely sign off, I have a holiday reminder for everyone in his house at Relia, Dead Kalut Cthulhu. Money, power, and respect are all yours at creditsuccesssecretsrevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit did your nerves spike. You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, December 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.31 per 